right here we have the dock and I'm gonna start with the dock and the S1 because that's what's already on my desk and it's what I'm the most comfortable with. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and talk about that now. So when you have the Avid dock and S1, the way you connect them to the computer is through ethernet. So you got ethernet connectors on the back and those plug in. The best way to do that is to go through a switch, a network switch. Use an independent network switch that plugs into your computer separately from your internet. If you know dealing with networks and stuff, this stuff gets very complicated and it's much easier to just run separate networks. So run one network for your Yukon services, another network for your internet, and then if you have Dante or AVB or anything like that, run another network networks specifically for those things. Don't try to keep them all on one. So you connect them through the app here. So this is your Yukon settings app. This is where you get the services connected and they would just show up over here, all surfaces, and then you would just drag them over to your desktop um, right here where it says my services and that's how they connect. So everything's connected here. You can see the, the screensaver here on here and then the dock is up. We can easily tell because we go in here and we can see soft keys. And what's great, cool thing about Yukon is that Yukon is not just for Pro Tools. It is for pretty much every major DAW and also your computer. So for instance, if I go here to Safari, you can actually control things within Safari on here if you wanted to like you can create new pages and all that kind of stuff. So that's one thing that you can do there. And let me actually move this here because it is looking for, yes, it's locked to Pro Tools because Pro Tools is open. Yep, yeah, okay, sweet. I'm going to open a session while I am babbling here. And we're just gonna get any old session. Let's see, what's something I can pull up without Demo. Okay, you know what? We're not using any audio, so I can just pull this session up. It'll be should be fine. All right, cool. So you got your your dock here, and so that's connected to the computer and the Yukon settings application. Uh, you can go in here and do all kinds of settings, and this is really really in depth, guys. And I'm not gonna spend as much time going through this individually. I'll do some separate videos specifically for that, but you can go in here and you can actually have different workstations. So right now I only have one workstation, but if I was to add my laptop to this, or if I had another computer in the building connected to the network, I could actually enable that as a workstation. And then at any given point, I could switch my surfaces here in this room to any other surface. As long as it's on the same network and you've got it in here, you can actually switch between that. So I could literally be controlling a Pro Tools rig on a on another computer down the hallway if I wanted to. That That's just how the ethernet situation works. With the SSL, it's connected directly to the computer via USB, so you don't have the capability. So if you're in a facility where that kind of matters, there's a right there. Applications, this is just where you're telling it which applications you want the surface to be locked to. In my case, it's locked to Pro Tools, and then I can also lock my transport and my uh, monitor control room if I wanted to. And where is my session? Uh, yes, give me that. Okay, sweet. All right. So then your general settings. This is going to be things like um, how you want the controllers to operate. So for instance, over here, you have select most recently attention track. So that's just meaning if you attention a track on the surface, it's going to automatically select it in pro tools, or you can attention on select button press, which is what I have it set to, which means that I have to physically push the select button on a track for it to attention it. And attentioning, excuse me, means that it's going to bring that fader here to the attention fader or the focus fader, whatever you want to call it, but it's going to move to right here and that's where it's going to live until I select something else. The next set of options that you have is going to be what do you want to attention as far as when you click on something in the DAW. So you can do things like track name, plugins, faders, pan controls, see all these different things here. These all affect how the control surface responds to your movements within Pro Tools. So if you click on a pan in Pro Tools, you can have it automatically attention 
to the dock here. It can go right to this attention fader on the dock. Auto bank to click track. That just means that as soon as you click on a track, the surface is automatically gonna bank to it. Doesn't matter where it's in. Some people like that, some people don't. You see, I have it turned on here. Show EQ Dynamics plugins on surface as inserts if there's an insert custom map. So all that's saying is if you've created a custom mapping for plugins, which we'll look at, then it will automatically show that when you pull up um, the EQ or Dynamics plugins. And then auto bank to select a track. Again, that's just another way for it to, to bank. If you just bank on a, on a, if you select the track in Pro Tools, it's gonna auto bank to it. Um, then you get down to the open windows on workstations when knob assigned from DAW click. So again, these are all things about how you navigate through your DAW that in turn affect your control surface here. So you look here at the options, you have either Avid Control, meaning on the Avid Control app, which is right here in front of me on the dock. Then you have uh, S3 upper knobs, which doesn't matter for me because I don't have an S3. And then channel mode knobs. That would be if I was in channel mode here and I was to click on something, it would automatically on the window open the windows on the computer. So for instance, if I have um, you know an EQ up and I pull up that EQ, it's gonna automatically open that plugin window on the screen. So a nice feature to have if you want that on there. And then some other open windows on workstations when editing, you have open plugins only, which is what I like. Open plugins and pans, open plugins and sends, or open plugins, pans, and sends. So if you want it to always pull up the windows on your computer screen, then that's what you would click there. For me, I only want the plugin windows to pop up. I have no reason for the pans to show up or the sends because I can clearly see them here on the surface. There's no reason for me to look at those. Then you also have these options. Close windows on workstation exiting, workstation tracks knob set changes. So meaning that when you change your knobs up here, it's gonna track that on the workstation. And then select by touch. All that is is an option to where it's automatically gonna select the track based on the touch. So like for instance, you can see right here on the back, we have final mix on, and then it, you can't really see it here because of, of the lighting, unfortunately, but there's an orange light here on this select button showing me that this track is selected if i was to go here and click on select here that's going to light up and if you look in the background pro tools back there you see rough mix just lit up so we'll go back to final mix go to rough mix final mix rough mix and if i was to turn on select by touch now i touch a fader and you see it's switching just by touching the faders so so for some people that could be cool if you if you just wanted to do that i'm not a big fan of that so i keep that turned off. So now you see I'm touching faders and it's not switching. I have to actually touch the select buttons to actually select the tracks back there. Cool. Um, solo modes, just that's all about how the solo does. I never change it from solo in place, but if you do after fader listen or pre fader listen, you can change that there. And then the show hidden tracks in banking layouts or spills. What this is, is, you know, in Pro Tools, you can hide tracks so you can have tracks hidden. And all this is saying is, do you want them to show up on the surface when you do certain actions? For me, I don't want that because the whole reason I have things hidden is because I need it to stay hidden for a particular reason. So I don't want them to show up. If I need to see my hidden tracks, I'm gonna physically go on my own and bring up those hidden tracks. Um, show close folder members. Again, you have the same options, banking layouts and spills. And you can see I have layouts turned on because what I want to happen is if I have a folder in Pro Tools closed, I want those members of the folder, so meaning the tracks that are within that folder, I want them to show up when I open, and when I go to a layout, and we'll look at layouts here in a minute. Uh, then you have uh, exclude inactive tracks. So again, this is just all about what you wanna view on the surface. Some people have tracks that are inactive, but they still want them to show up on the surface for whatever reason. So you can have that. I have it turned on. Display track numbers on surface. That's simply gonna put track numbers there if you care to see, see that. And then suspend all faders. Now this could be useful if you're in a review situation or something to where you don't actually wanna write any automation or tamper with anything. You can turn suspend all faders on and then when you touch your faders, it won't actually do anything, which could be good. The record auto switch settings. Now this is for the record switch right up here underneath the select switch. 
when you hit that button, it can do multiple things. So mine currently is set to automation mode and then trim. So trim would be if I was to hold shift and hit the button, then it would go into trim automation mode. And if I just hit the button by itself, it's gonna toggle through my different automation modes. So if I just go like right here, you see I'm toggling through all the different automation modes right there. And then if I was to hold shift and hit it, then it goes into latch mode. The other options you have here are record and input monitor. Sometimes I'll switch to that, especially if I'm gonna be doing a day of tracking. It's very nice to be able to just hit the record button there on the surface. And then if I need to do input monitoring, the whole shift and, and get into there, same thing. And then again, you have automation mode and then record and then record and automation mode. So you can control how those buttons work to, to your advantage. And like I said, I switch between automation mode, trim and record input monitoring, depending on what I'm working on on that given day. Enable transport mix controls. That's simply if you have a transport and you want the mix controls on it. Um, and then bank whole surface. That's literally, if depending on how many surfaces you have, does it bank the whole thing or not? So I actually have three S1s and a dock. So when I go to bank, it's gonna bank everything. So all 25 of those faders are going to bank simultaneously. 25, I think I did it right. That's the right math, right? 16, 24, yeah, 25. So all of them bank. But if I didn't have that on, it would literally, each surface would bank independently of it of itself. And that could be a good option for some people. Not sure um, why you would want that to be, but I, I do know people that, that work in those kind of ways. So definitely nice that they give you that option. Let me check the, the chat over here, make sure nobody's asking me any questions that I am missing. Let's see, let's see. Uh-huh. All right, no questions popping in. Very good. All right, cool. I'm going to continue on. Hey, will this stream stay on the channel? Hey, what's up, man? Will the stream stay on the channel? Yes, the stream will stay on the channel. I may or may not leave it up as a live, it might turn into a video. So if you're subscribed, just be on the lookout for that. I might take it down as a live stream and re-upload it as just a single video. Cause I definitely know for sure I wanna cut out the whole first 10 minutes where I was just kind of rambling through and dealing with some technical stuff. Uh, but yeah, it will definitely be here for, for you to watch later. Thanks for, for chiming in. And actually, now that we're, we have this up, can I put this? To, to pop up over here. All right, let me go to my YouTube channel and I need to go into, give me one second guys. I know I'm, I'm, I'm dipping off really quickly here, but I just wanna make sure I'm, um, there we go. All right, sweet. And let me just see if your comment will pop up now that I've got this on here. Sweet, okay, yes, I do see that. Nice. All right, cool, continuing on. In here, the other things we're gonna look at are the dock. So these settings right here are specific to the dock unit. So automation mode follows the dock track. So meaning that right here where we have our different automation setting, this is gonna always follow the track that is attentioned right here. And you can change that if you'd like to. Monitor knob mode, uh, mine is a set to signable knob, which is basically with a signable knob, you can go in on certain plugins and things. So like if I go down here to clip effects and I hover over this, you can see where that blue just came up on the screen. That means that I can now turn this and that's going to adjust that. So look at that, boom. So just hover the mouse over it and scroll. Now SSL does have a similar function. I can tell you that SSL definitely has a similar function. And I'll be honest, full transparency, as of right now, the SSL version does work better because of the way Avid's work is the manufacturers need to 
um, go into their settings and enable something. It's to my knowledge, again, and if Eddie jumps on here, who's the lead developer for UConn, if he jumps on here, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but there's something that the developers have to do to get that to work properly. Avid's opened it up, but the developers still have to go in and trigger it. So for instance, if I go here to, to the guide particle plugin, you see I'm hovering over this setting and the knob isn't changing the settings like it should. So lots of plugins that don't work this way currently, but hopefully in the near future, they will get that fixed through all the manufacturers. But most of the Avid stuff works again, like you see me down here on the clip effects that works. If I was to go here and add, we'll just do EQ, um, just the EQ7, normal Pro Tools EQ. So you see here, I hover over that, there it goes. Sweet, all right, cool. Now, and then another cool thing about this is actually, is say I'm I'm trying to deal with something, but I wanna, I wanna lock this in. I could click on this, and now you see it's turned red. This little red LEDs popped up. So now, I can hover over anything, but it's still going to be locked to that gain. So that could be good if you're doing, trying to do some automation on maybe like some, some compressor ratio or something or, or threshold, excuse me, I probably wouldn't want to automate the ratio. Uh, but yeah, you could leave that locked to that and that could always be that now. So that's kind of cool um, way to, to navigate through things and then you click it again and it goes off. And so now you're back to normal operation where you can hover over anything and use that setting. Cool, cool, all right. Close that up. Let's see here. Uh, then you have the other ways this could be used is control room monitor. So if you're using the control room monitor feature, then you could actually just, this will be your control room volume. And then also if you have up to four different sets of monitors, you can use that knob to control that there. And so that's a, a cool way to use that particular knob there. And then your shift monitor knob, which means you hold down this shift button here and use the monitor knob. You can see mine right now set to control room monitor. Excuse me, but again, you could go in here and change it. So even if you have this assigned to one thing, the shift layer is usually gonna allow you to do it to something else. So this would be great. So again, if you wanna use the assignable knob function, but you also use that as your control room monitor, you could actually just assign that to the shift layer. And one cool thing you can actually do with that. So you can go into a master fader in Pro Tools and you can actually right click. Oh, where's the option? Yukon monitor. So you right click on the track, go to Yukon monitor, and now shift. Oh, did I turn the setting on? There it goes. Hold shift. And now you see I'm controlling that fader with the dock. So even if you don't have a monitor controller, this is actually a really cool way to, to uh, still have control over your overall output is using the dock's monitor control knob and you just assign it to a master fader. And so I am going to turn that off, turn that guy to zero. And then S1, your soft key colors, this is basically just down here at the bottom where you have the soft key, you can see they're all lit up different colors. And right now they're according to the track colors and spill, but you could have it to the soft keys or to the track colors in your session. So you got options on how those keys show up there. Then down here, these last set of general settings is going to be for the S3, the S1, and also the old artist mixes, which I do have one of those guys right here. This is an Avid Artist Mix, and these things still work with Pro Tools. So if you looking at the S1 and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to spend that kind of money, you can go and find yourself um, some, some uh, artist mixes and they still work perfectly fine. Now, I will say that because they are older units, depending on the condition, the one you found in or how long it's been used, some of the faders might be given up on you. Some of these um, encoders, like uh, one of mine, um, a lot of these don't spin the way they need to. They don't respond very well. Um, and that could easily be fixed. Um, if you're a, a tinkerer like that, you can, you can go in and, um, replace the potentiometer or something like that. Or if you, you really want to send it into Avid, you can send it in and they will get you straight. But yeah, so the artist mixes do still, still work with Pro Tools. All right. So in those settings, you have 
your pan auto switches to channel mode, which just means that anytime you click the pan button here, it automatically switches into channel mode for the entire S1. Reverse insert knobs just means that your insert knobs would be in reverse order than what they already are. Why somebody would wanna do that? I don't know, but it's an option. Reverse dynamic knobs. So it's gonna reverse them, meaning that they move in the opposite direction. Again, I don't know why anybody would wanna do that, but it's an option, so it's there. Function recall. You can do it by track type, by individual track, or none. And this one's an interesting one because it's about how the tracks operate as you jump in and out of them. So for instance, right now I have this master track selected and then we put it in, it's in inserts mode. So let me go into select here and go to another track. Actually, let me bank over to something that's a little less. All right, so here we go. Cool, sorry, selected this um, vocal track here and you can see we're in insert mode and then I'm gonna click on the virtual mix rack there. Okay, so see the virtual mix rack has popped up. So now I'm gonna click on this next lead vocal track and we can see that it stayed because it's the same type of track. My settings is set to, oh, let's get settings back up on the screen, recall by track type. If I was to go over here and go to a VCA, we can see that it's completely changed the layout and now the plugin is off the screen. Now, if I go back to one of those vocal tracks, there it goes. It went straight back to where it was when I left it there. So you can see just by track type, that's how it's remembering its functions. If I was to do individual track, now I'm on this lead vocal track here. If I go to this lead vocal track, you can see the plugin went away. Even though it's the same type of track, it's, they're both audio tracks because it's doing it by individual tracks. So now what that means is on this one, maybe I go to EQ and okay, that pulled that up. So I don't want that. Let's go, let's back out of that. Let's go to a different insert. So we'll go to, okay, CLA 76. So now if I go to that track, we get the inserts. And then if I go to this track, we get that insert. So it's literally remembering it by track that you select. It, it's changing each time you select a different track. And again, if I go down here to a VCA and I select that VCA, then everything goes away because there's nothing showing up on that as far as modes of what could be up on the screen. Go back to that vocal track, there's a 76. Go back to that one, there is the slate. But then if I switch the settings back to track type, as soon as I go back to this vocal, now it's staying on inserts, but if I take this insert out, so now that insert is out on that track, and I go to this one, cool. All right, so let's pull slate back up. And am I on the right track? Nope, I am not on the right track. Let's go here. What did I just do? All right, there we go. Getting out of channel mode. All right, so select that, virtual mix rack. Select that one, virtual mix rack, and so on and so forth. So it's literally keeping up with the same thing. As long as I have the same insert on the tracks, it's gonna keep everything exactly the same. Only thing that's changing is the track that's selected. If you, you barely can see it, but you see the track selecting in the background back there. So those are different ways to manage how the recall mode works on the surface. And I actually quite like the individual track one. So I'm actually gonna switch my setting right here live and, and go to that one, because that's actually a cool one. And then the S3 is the same thing, it's just gonna uh, change it on the S3 if you want the upper knobs to recall or you want the lower knobs to recall. All right, cool. Now let's go over to the preferences. Top down video glitches super often. Is it just me? No, nope, you are absolutely right. I mentioned it earlier. Um, I got this thing rigged up uh, for this live. So it is flickering on us. Let me see if I can do something here really quickly to see if I can adjust that. But it is not the ideal situation for that setup. So it's definitely gonna do it. Whoa, the function recall thing is dope. Yes, it is. The function recall is super, 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 Dope, um, gotta get into it, gotta get into it. 
All right, cool. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Functional recalls. Yes, okay, we're on functional recall, very good. And I wanna make an adjustment really quick, stand by. Because to show some other things, I'm going to have this guy right here. All right. Oh yeah. Find some molars. Cool. All right. So now let's go over to preferences. Now this is just dealing with kind of just some general stuff about the, the services like your OLED screen saver time, just meaning how long before it, that you're just sitting idle, do these things just go into their little screen saver mode where it just has these little LED circles kind of dancing around on there, mine is set to 10 minutes. And then VCA folder spill. Now here's one of my favorite features and this is gonna be one of the ones that are going to be deal breaker for me as a Pro Tools user, and you'll see why. So right now I have my single master mode set to lock spilled master to dock, and then the assigned VCA master folder track goes to dock, or you can have it go to folder track on the S1, S3, or artist. And all that does is if you open up a VCA, what's gonna happen is when you spill it out, my mode right now is set to go here to the dock but there is another mode to where it will go to the last fader on the S1, an S3, or an artist mix. And I use that when I'm working remotely and I have just a single artist mix, I'll use that version on my laptop. That way I can always get out of it. And so let me go ahead and show you that since we're in here and the whole point of us being live is to show this stuff off, right? So right here we have a lead vocal folder, right? Cool, so I'm gonna close that folder, all right? Now, that lead vocal folder is right here on the S1. And so I'm gonna double click on the select button. And you can see it just spilled out all of those lead vocal tracks. It also opened it up on the screen. And now that master lead vocal has moved here on the dock and we can see it's blinking. And basically this is just telling us that we're locked in a spilled mode and I can still bank through them. So however many tracks I have in that, it's gonna, be able to bank through them still. And then if I wanna get out of that, I just hit that button and now we're out of that. That is navigational judoo right there. I mean, like when I have sessions up, I'm literally mostly closed. Most of my folders just stay closed. Let me just see what we got going on in this session. Let me just select all these folders and we're gonna close them all up. All right, close the folders, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm, okay, yep, oh, I won't do it that way. Cool, so now all the folders are closed. Look at that. So now I have a nice and tidy little bit of everything here. I've got all my folders, so my keys, my aux keys, horns, everything's there. If I need to bank over, then I can get to SFX, which is the last track there. So you can see most of this fits across the folder because we literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten folders. So a total of 10 folders and I have eight faders. So literally banking over, I'm getting to everything I need to get to. If I just nudge over twice, then I get to the other two. So that's all right there on the surface. And then if I need to get into anything at any given point, I can just double click on the select button and it's going to spill it out. So folders and VCAs do the exact same thing. It spills out onto the surface. So you see there's everything that was in that percussion loop. And then now the master fader for that has come here. So that's the top folder and everything for that is gonna be here. And then I click that and it jumps out. Now, just for the sake of showing it, if I was to change this to spill goes to the S1, now when I do that, double click on drums, you can see down here, now here's the drums fader. It's gonna go here and then all of the other faders are there. And again, I can bank through, but this last one is always gonna be drums. That's gonna stay locked in on drums because that is the 
master for it and I've set the spill mode to make it be on the S1. And then all I need to do to get out of it is a double click on that drums again. And the same thing if I was to hit here when I had it locked to the dock, then everything goes back to normal. If I wanna go into guitars, double click, spills out, boom, double click, get out of it, all right? But I'm gonna go back to dock mode on mine so that way when I double click, it automatically goes here and then I get all the faders on the S1. And again, if you have multiple S1s, it's gonna spill across the entire thing. So again, for me, I love this. Whether I'm working on music or I'm working on a film or a TV show, it's beautiful to have all my sound effects folder just closed. And then when I want to do something with the sound effects, double click on it and it spills out across all 25 of my channels that I have. It spills them out. I can mess with them, do what I need to do. I can get into the EQs. I can get into all the stuff on the surface. And then when I'm done with that, all I do is click on the master and it's closes it back up on the surface and within Pro Tools. So that feature right there is huge for me. I mean, look at the session behind the screen here. You can see it, like the session is nice and tidy. Everything is closed up inside of a folder. I don't have to look at all the tracks on the screen unless I absolutely want to look at them. So that's great. Multi-master mode is for the S3 only, so this is just gonna allow you to assign VCA master folder tracks to channel strips nine through 16 or 13 through 16. And then these next set of options you have, folder spill overrides the layout. So what that means is if you're utilizing the layouts function, which will allow you to basically set up your own custom configurations of tracks, excuse me, that are displayed. So there are times where I'll work in layout most where I'll have a layout that maybe just drums or is my AAF from uh, if I'm doing a dialogue edit and I wanna be able to jump into the to that, I can go into my layout mode. And what happens is if I do a folder spill, it automatically overrides that particular layout that you're in. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just one second. Uh, auto spill VCA from control app attention. So again, here's a cool one. The same thing we just did with the um, the surface double clicking on the select button, I can actually do that another way. So I did not preset this up. So we are gonna be flying on off the cuff here, flying off the cuff. Let me go over here and we're live, right? That's what we're doing, we live live. So let me go in here and I wanna go to my Switcher settings and okay, super source um, box. Let's go to box number two. And I want to change that to nope, not camera. All right, cool. So you see here, we are at, we're on the app. So this is the free Avid Control app that you can. I, you don't need it. So you can see the same thing here. We got out here and I can go into, you know, channel mode. but what I want to show you right here, if I select drums, what it just did. It did the exact same thing we did before. Go to bass, go to horns, go to spell out the horns. The same exact thing I did here by, here again, and I'll show you. And it spills that out for every reason. So we'll go, let me go down to a track that we know this and horns. There's the horns, they spilled out right there. Double click, boss key spilled out. Right here on control app, excuse me, just touching. Multiple ways to do the same thing, just about whatever's the most convenient for you to do, but very nice to do that there. And that's on the track page. And the same thing worked if you're over in the channels page. If I was to go in here and click on one of these guys in the channels page, it does the exact same thing. So again, a very, very efficient way to kind of navigate through your sessions. You don't have to have everything open. You can keep it closed and you just literally just use these folder and VCA spills to get everything to populate on the surface there. Auto spill folder from control application. That's the same thing, uh, essentially. 
uh, it's just the VCAs or the folders. It's just allowing you to do both of those. And then synchronize folder state with spill. So again, that's just the background of Pro Tools. Is Pro Tools gonna actually do it and the Surface is gonna do it or just one or the other? I like to have both of them working just because visually it just makes sense to me that if I open up channels on the Surface that if I look up at the screen, then Pro Tools reflects what I'm seeing down at the bottom. All right, foot switch operation on the back of the dock, there is a foot switch, and I want to, I believe, on the back of the S1. Uh, let me see here. I got a, one of my S1s here. Yeah, there's a foot switch on the back of the S1. So, foot switch operation is just, you can have it assigned to a talkback. You can have it to punch in, record, or punch out. And then you could also have it set to record and play. So this is a very cool thing. If, you, if you're if you a guitar player or a keyboard player and you will need to be able to punch in, you could actually use a foot switch with your dock or with your S1 and have that assigned to be your record uh, function. So very, very nice way to be able to record or even just your engineering a session and you just wanna be able to hit the button um, with your foot instead of having to, you know, take your foot off or of whatever you're else you're doing. And maybe you're messing with a mic pre or something, but you can use your foot with a foot switch to control that. So that is a very cool way there to navigate. Let me just check my comments really quickly to make sure nobody's saying anything and I'm missing it. Okay. Ah, what's up, Mike? No problem, buddy. No problem. I'm gonna leave it up. So if anybody needs to watch it later, if you gotta you gotta head out, that's fine. Catch it later on the flip side. Where did this pop out chat go? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Oh, you know what? Let me log in because this is going to make things easier. Throw me a thumbs up in the chat if you're learning something. If you're learning something, throw, throw me a thumbs up. Hope this is good. Hope this is good. Yes, I want to log in. Uh huh. Cool. All right, sweet. There it goes. It let me in. Boom. There we go. That's what we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted right here. Okay, okay. I don't see no thumbs up. If y'all ain't learning nothing, man, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna end it here if y'all ain't learning nothing. Talk to me, talk to me. Give me give me a thumbs up. If you are learning something, if this has been good to you, let me know. Yes, this is what I want. Man, I tell you what though, doing these live streams, all this back end stuff sometimes gets pretty convoluted um, because you are literally trying to do multiple things at once. Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
All right, there's my chat. Sweet. Goodness gracious. All right, moving on. Moving on. This is going to be determining for me on what to invest in in the future. Good. That That's the purpose, man. That, that's literally one of my main reasons for doing this. My, one of my main reasons for doing this was to be able to to help people make this decision on what to buy because uh, there's a lot of hoorah things going on about the different products, but there's no definitive like this is what this does, especially for Pro Tools. This is what you're going to get. Good or bad, this is what you have to deal with. And so I wanted to make this um, for everybody. So whether you're here now live or somebody watching in the future, then they've got a place to come to and y'all share it with everybody. Share it with your friends and let them know, hey, Dell is breaking down the SSL stuff and the Avid stuff in their entirety. That way you can make an informed decision about which way you want to go because it's a lot of money. I mean, we're, we're not going to lie. I mean, it, you can easily get up to three, four grand on these setups, depending on what type of configurations you go, how many faders you want. I can go ahead and tell you the more faders, the nicer. It, it just, it, it is what it is. Uh, because again, with this spill out, for instance, the more things I can spill out at once and access is, it helps me just to be faster. I don't have to bank as much. And the same thing is true for like plugin parameters. If we were to pull up a, a, a plugin again, let's go into a track here. Let's go, let's see what's on our mix bus. Do we have any inserts on our mix bus? Okay, yeah, so there's one. All right, so now all our parameters are showing up here on the surface and I can bank through, or page, excuse me, I can page through the different parameters. So right now, there's not a lot of parameters on this particular plugin. So two pages is not that bad. However, if my other S1 was on, then it would show me all of those parameters across all the surfaces. So uh, actually, you didn't see me do that. So let me turn that back off. Okay, cool. So you see here, I'm inside of this track and I opened up a plugin. So I'll do this again. Select, select the track and click on the plugin. Now the plugin popped up and there's the parameters for the plugin there. And then I page over and then there's the rest of the parameters. So again, two pages on this particular plugin and not too bad. But if I had both of these S1s that's on the desk currently on, then you would literally see everything populate across both of them. And so however many parameters you have. So for instance, if we were to go to something that's got way more stuff on it. So like, let's see EQ7. So if I go, that's one page. Okay, again, that's not a huge plugin. Uh, do I have anything here? That's large. Oh, I know. Let me pull up Kirchhoff. And I'm actually going to show you something here while we're here. Select configure. And I'm going to go to the slot D. And there's my Kirchhoff EQ because it's a preset for me. And I'm going to assign that to the track. And now that we have done that, we can go back and oh, I need to select it. So select. Sign D slot, and I'm going to put that in. Yes, come on, don't do too much thinking on me. Let's go. All right, there it is. There's Kirchhoff EQ. So there's eight settings, page over. Eight more settings, page over, eight more settings, so on and so forth. You can keep paging for however many settings are there. If both of these S1s were on, matter of fact, is this one plugged in? Yes, it is actually. It is plugged in, it's just not on. There we go. All right, so check this out. Uh, let me zoom out a bit for you so you can see uh, let's go here all right cool so you can see here now it's showing across both of these all the parameters that are available and if i plugged up another s1 then it would do the same thing it would just spill out again and so now as i'm paging through i'm seeing a lot more settings 
across both of these surfaces. So it gives me great access to everything I need to see way faster on one of these surfaces and literally can go there, pull that gain up, change the frequency, boom, all that's right there. So easy peasy, right? Cool. And you can do the same thing up here on the, the, uh, the, the touch screen for the dock. You literally go to, I'm on the, the mix bus channel and I go to my inserts right here and then I go to the Kirchhoff EQ and there's all the different settings for the Kirchhoff. I can just scroll through, do that there. I could even do custom mappings if I wanted to, to help me out with that. But same thing, no problem. Go here, bring the gain up on that, change the frequency, change the Q. It's all right there. And you can use the knobs or you can use your finger. So whichever one you wanna do, same thing for pan. If you wanna deal with the pans, you can go up here, touch them with your fingers or you can use the knobs here and do that. So yeah, that is what that looks like spilling out um, things. And since we're here again, since I got it plugged up, I might as well show it to you, right? Let's go to one of those tracks again. So let's go to, uh, let's see, maybe let's do drums. Spill the drums, you see right there, it just spilled out all of the drums across all the channels there, and then I close it up. So that one there went. So you see, it's very intuitive even because it noticed that I plugged in this one and because the way my settings are set up, this one comes before this one. And it just knows that, you know, at that originally I only had this one plugged up, so it did everything here. But when I plugged this one in, it now just intuitively knows, okay, this one comes before that one because it's the way that they are set up here. You see there's S11 and S13, and then I have a second S1, obviously, if there's one and three. So when I plug that other one in, that one will fall in between these two. All right, cool. And I believe that is all of our preferences. Oh, no, not all preferences. We have up here our miscellaneous. So shift, plus fader sets the fader leverage to zero. So all that is, is you hold shift, you can click a fader and it pops, you, pops it up to zero. So very, very nice function there to be able to do that. And which brings me to kind of one of my main things about the S1 versus the artist mix. Um, and I, I had artist mixes for a long time. Uh, so here's one of my artist mixes here. So one of the things about it is, let me, Put the lens back down. All right, cool. So you see where the select and auto buttons are here? This is unity gain for the fader. See how close these are? If you have faders like this, depending on how big your fingers are, and it really doesn't matter how big your fingers are, it's a very tight space to get in between that. So what could happen is, remember the select button and the, and the uh, automation button, if you hold shift, there's different layers for those. So what happens is if you're trying to access one of these buttons while holding shift, but your finger accidentally touches a fader, which is very easy to do because look how tight it is. I mean, it's right there. So what happens is you end up moving that fader to zero. And if you're writing automation, then you just flick your fader from wherever it was back up to zero. Uh, so that was a, a, a big annoyance for me with this one. And I've had this one probably for, 10 years, I think, or, or somewhere around there, I've, I've had uh, the uh, artist mixes. So they lasted a very, very long time. So the improvement here on the S1, you can see is now, here's Unity gain on the fader, but the select and automation switches are up here. So way better. So now when I do shift anything, it's all up there. And I don't have to worry about accidentally touching the fader unless my fader is all the way up here at 12, which is a very rare case for me that a fader is all the way up at 12. Cool. All right. Let me see. Just make sure I'm not missing anything here. SSL or Yukon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. All right. Continuing on. Latching shift just means that instead of you being able, having to hold shift for something, you can just have shift latch. So you see there, you click shift and it latches. Click it once, it latches. 
and the same shift button there. You see how it's all linked? The shift up here is the same thing as the shift down here. It doesn't matter where you hit it at, just depending on where you're at, you know, in your workflow, you can hit shift anywhere and it's going to activate that shift. Um, and then auto talk back. If you have a talk back connected to a, I want to say a S3, um, Depend, yeah, wherever you have a talkback set up, um, I actually have, I'll be honest, I need to look into that one because I don't use it that often. Uh, I'm going to assume that instead of using your foot switch for talkback, it will automatically go into talkback probably when you're not recording. That would make sense for it just to automatically jump to being talkback on. Uh, show fader values at a uh, time that fader release. So just meaning that when you are touching a fader, you can see the values of the fader and then you let go of the fader and it gives a few seconds or, you know, milliseconds maybe. And then the, it goes back to just showing the number. So right now it could be at time that fader touch. So now as soon as I touch the fader, it goes away. Uh, let's see while fader is touched. So now it's immediate. So that, Minor difference, but you can see here. Time that fader release. Okay, let go of the fader. And now it's waiting. Oh, look at that. Fader value timeout. Two seconds. So right now, mine is set for two seconds. So after I release a fader, two seconds, and then it goes away. If it's timed at fader touch, then you touch the fader, then you touch it goes away. So it doesn't matter if you're doing release or touch there. Those are pretty similar modes as far as I'm concerned. Yep. All right, cool. Sweet. Surface brightness, literally just how bright is your surface? I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory and an artist control LCD screen. If you had an art, the old artist control, which goes with the artist mix series. And then wheel sensitivity, your jog wheel, shuttle wheel, jog is just how does this thing work? And then it could be global or application specific. And so it's literally just how fast it works. So right now, like if I go into jog mode, which it's actually not going to do because there we go. Oh, I have no idea what drive this is pulling from. Jog, and then I go on shuttle. Oh, okay. Uh, whatever drive that's moving from, it, it does not like it. Cool, but you get the idea. Jog and shuttle, and then also with the wheel, actually you can do zooming in. So you got zoom, zoom, or you can do a vertical right there, and that's doing the track. So if I select this track, see it's vertically zooming and zoom out there. And then if you hold shift and select it, then now it becomes a scroll. Scroll up and down. Uh, another cool one is mark in and mark out. So like if you want to mark in right there and then you hit play and then you want to do a mark out for us. See, I just made a selection right there. Cool. So I just did that right here with the surface and the move select is literally going to take that selection and now I can move it. So this is very useful if I'm doing like a, if I'm flying a hook um, or if I want to move like all my backgrounds from a scene to another scene, I could grab them, do a copy, move select, get to the next scene that I want to put those things in and then hit paste and it just did that. So that's a very useful uh, do to select it. We all know what that does. And then the shift layer is due to all uh, the user layer here. Actually, you can assign anything you want to these two buttons on the shift layer. So right now I actually have this one assigned to clip gain. So if I was to go in here and open up this track and then if I were to move my selection down, so let's go here and move selection down. And now if I do shift and click that, this becomes clip gain. So you can see right there. I'm doing clip gain with the wheel. So very useful. Move select. Move select. Oh, come on. And then go there. Shift. Now we're doing 
So very quick way to kind of get through. If you need to do some edits on some clip gains for whatever reason, you do that. And then now you just, you're rocking and rolling. Sweet. Love it. All right. Um, your app button just allows you to talk, talk through your app or talk through different workstations if you do. And then your okay button would be just okay and confirm different menus that are up. So if I was to pull up like my IO setup, you can hear, see there, I can hit cancel. Um, and then your save button, you just double click to do a save. And let me actually do a save as on this just because live, just so I know that this session is a different session. So now if I was to make a change there, you can see it's lit up red, double click and it saves. And the reason you have to double click is just, that's how the surfaces are. You literally have to just double click anytime you want to do something because if you hit it once, it starts blinking at you just saying, you know, do you want to save or you want to cancel? So it's just a, a way you confirm that you're saving. And that's been the same since I can remember on Avid surfaces, every single one you have to double click to do save. Um, and then, um, another user, user layer there again, uh, this I just opens up the, you control settings where you get to the soft keys page. So now we were just over here in preferences. Now your soft keys area is where you can literally see, you can customize all of these. So I told you about the user one and user two. And if you hold, you hit shift here, you can see right here that that's what they're assigned to. but you can click on any of these and go up here and assign it to a different command. And so you have things like key commands, surface commands, page commands, Yukon or wheel. So a key command would be like, literally you could put in different key commands. So I've used this for doing things like, you know, any of your normal shortcut keys that you just wanna have assigned to a different uh, set of buttons or like um, one layer I have here on my, my um, surface here as you actually see, if I go, let me get a Pro Tools, get a Pro Tools, and I go to, let's get out of there, and I go to my uh, user page, I actually have different folder options, but then I also have a mode um, that I did, actually I need to resave this because it's a new version. But there, I have it set to where I can literally uh, go in here and write memory location. So you literally, I had programmed it to where you would hit a, a button and it would do the keys. So for instance, if I go up here to uh, command, and you go to key command, you could literally have it do, uh, you do enter, you know, enter special. So it would be the keypad, enter key, and then that, that opens up your memory location. And then I would have it do something like intro. And then I would have it enter again. And when things work, what did I assign that to? That's a shift layer on the workspace. So now if I go here, oh, we're in edit mode still. All right, so it's not doing it. And that's just a matter of, there's a a little rhyme and reason you have to have to some of this stuff uh, when you do it. So I did enter. Let's make sure I'm on the right thing. Yep, enter, okay. Yes. Actually, you know what? Let me make sure I did this correctly because I might've done it wrong. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, let's do a five millisecond delay here. And let's see. Okay, we gotta see what's up with that because that should work. Let's try another one just for the sake of since we're here. Shift, 
go to shift layer, this button, and let's do uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's do shift F for, for a folder. So I'm gonna hit shift F. And that should open and close a folder. So that right there. Okay. So we are having a little glitch here. Oh, wait a minute. It's pulling up that window. So that's working. Yep. All right. So I will figure out what's going on with that. See, let's clear that and just for the sake of it let me go here to this and i want to see something if i assign this with the surface function no not a surface function this needs to be a yukon and then we want to So you can see here, there's so many options, man. Look, look at all this stuff. I literally can access anything in Pro Tools that I possibly want to do. And matter of fact, let me just search for it. Folder, uh, let's see, open. Okay, it does not show me. I know it's a button for it. All right, hold up. Let me do this because I know it's already assigned to something toggle folder where is that at navigation folders okay cool so now let's go back to the dock and we're gonna go to that one and i want to go nope delete that yukon navigation folders open folder all right so now, there it goes. So you saw, I just opened that folder with that button. Now, the better one would be to use the toggle. So instead of open folder, toggle folders. That way, open, close the folder. Boom. So, fully customizable there and you can see again that's every single button all the shift layers everything the the um the s1 layouts and however many you have you can see right now it's showing me unit one s3 um s13 so that means that's my one on my far right and then this one on my far left is going to be one so those can have completely different functions you notice that these are set to layouts and then these are set to different record things and then clear clip so as many s1s as you have that's how many soft keys you have to control and you remember that they're labeled by default to show you your modifier keys so shift option control and command and then it also shows the window key or the alt key if you're on a pc and then you have four user buttons those are just the labels that they gave to them. The You can change it from that to be whatever you want to. So they don't have to be those buttons. They can be whatever you want them to be. That's one of the great things about the Yukon stuff is that it's fully customizable on most of this stuff to what you can do with the things. Uh, if you go up here to like the control lower, that's all my lower buttons on the app and this, also goes with the app or the dock, the buttons on the dock. So on the back, you know, you have your physical buttons right here, but it, these just line up with the same thing that's on the app. Um, that will be, this is the control center. So this is gonna be, uh, if you're on an artist control or here on the actual Avid control menu here, you can see it's the same thing there. And you can got all these different pages that you can be on. Uh, a cool thing about this that many people may or may not know is that you can actually swipe here on your different pages. So that's really cool. Like for instance, if you're in your your groups and you've got a lot of different groups, you can 
scroll through your different groups. You don't have to hit the page buttons down here. You can actually just swipe. So that's a very nice way to navigate through here. And again, because this is fully customizable, you could go in here and when you get down to like page like 120, there's stuff on there, but there's some pages that have almost nothing on them. So like this one, page 149. So you could literally go in here and set up pages that you want to be your own custom pages that you can jump to. And then you could assign a button to be the trigger to go to one of those pages. So for instance, if I go back to, uh, that's page 149, or 148, right? Okay, cool. So let's go back to our doc horizontal touch strip and let's see. I want to, I use these functions, so I don't want to change anything I'm actually using. Oh, you know what? I can just recall my settings. This is because I have, yeah, I have mine already, so it doesn't matter. So we're just going to go here to where we have the right to all enabled, and I'm going to change that from that to be a page. And I'm going to tell it to go to control center, jump to page 148. Cool. So now that button jumps to 148. Saw that? Let's go. Let's go back. Let's go to home. Go to menu. Hit that button. It automatically jumped to page 148. So if that's my custom layout that I've created that's got a bunch of stuff on it that I want for me personally, hitting that button's always gonna take me to my custom page here that then I can always have quick access to without having to scroll through or navigate to any other kind of way. So that's just a quick way to navigate through there and do that. And again, and then wheel function is gonna be different things you want to happen to the wheel. Um, so, you know, transport jog, shuttle, control. Um, what Again, mine, I have mine set to be clip gain is what I have one of my modes set to. So literally, if we go to the transport wheel, well, not the transport wheel, it's the dock wheel. Dock right, all right, cool. So shift layer, you see clip gain. So what that is, is a wheel function, clip gain, and it's set to the dock. So now when I hit that button, it takes me to clip gain. Cool, all right, moving on, moving on. Any questions, let me know, let me know. Layout, so this is your layout page and then you have assignment page. So by default, the assignment of the doc is to the attention track and then everything else is auto assigned, meaning that it just goes with whatever's on the session. But you could actually go in here and assign it to specific tracks within your sessions. And this, so this is where layouts come into play. And you can set up layouts here inside of U-Control or you can set out layouts here on the surface. So I'm actually gonna do it here from the surface just so you can get a, a sense for how that goes. So I'm gonna make a, let's say maybe a music um, VCAs maybe. I wanna have all my music. Nope, let's not do VCAs because VCAs have nothing in it based on this session. So I'm gonna go to do to all and I want to toggle the folders. Look at that. So it just did to all, toggle the folders in the background, even though I have this other uh, thing pulled up because I have the surface locked to Pro Tools, it's just always gonna operate Pro Tools functions no matter what else is going on. All right, cool, so now I've got all my tracks here. So I'm gonna go into assignment mode and then I am going to select keys, aux keys, horns, guitars, bass, drums, and percussion loops. And I think that's all I want, cool. And I want to make that be it's telling me which version of my surfaces I have. And I want it to start on track number nine or fader number nine, which is right here on my second dot. So I'm going to click there and you can see there it's put all of those here. 
and then I am going to store that and we'll just store it in this particular slot right here and we're going to give it a name. We could do that right here on the tablet and we're going to say music. I'm going to do all caps music. All right. So we do done there and then I am going to clear all and then I'm going to store this one in my first slot as just all. Okay, cool. So now when I go up here to the layouts tab, if I click music, it goes to the music. If I go to all, it goes to all. So now this is my layout for how this side of the surface is going to move. So this side is locked to a layout. Now over here, I can move around if I want to move around and tab through all the different tracks, but this side is going to stay locked. And I really, really, really love the layouts because this is, again, this is a way to create different customized workflows that speed up your workflow by having your layout set up in a way that makes sense to you. You could have one set of faders that are always something. And then you have another set of faders that is something else. So if I was to go here and let me just put my face back on the screen so we get that off. All right, cool. So right now, if I open up, let's say guitars, double click on guitars, you know the whole spill thing. So it spilled out. As soon as I back out of it, we are back into the layout for that. You can see those faders never change. These ones that I set up originally never change because my layout is right there. Now, if I go to all mode, now it's going to go back to functioning in the normal way that it should function. So lay you can have a bunch of different layouts here and you can see it. It's populating here on the app as well. You can see what it's doing. I've got those locked to those particular folders in that particular layout. If I go here, look at the layouts, you can see there's my different layouts and you can have up to 48. And then here's the other fun part you can export and import layers. So if you've got certain ways you work that are consistent, so like for me working in post-production, my SFX tracks are always named a certain way. My dialogue tracks are always named a certain way. I've got, I can have layouts set up that all I need to do when I want to get to that stuff is go into my layouts folder where I have them saved and pull up my custom layouts. And then every session I go into, I've automatically got the layouts I want to have ready to rock and I can do what I need to do at any given point. And again, because the tracks are named the same, it's going to see them the same because it, it doesn't matter that it's a different session. All that matters is it's looking for tracks that are named specific names. And as long as those are in the session, then the layouts thing works perfectly fine for you. And for anybody who uses the Pro Tools Windows configuration, it's very similar to that, to where you can save a particular Windows configuration and it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you recall that Windows configuration, Pro Tools is automatically going to snap all those windows back to where you wanted them to be based on that particular configuration. So the same thing with the layouts. When you're using layouts mode with the artist series, I mean, not the artist, but the Avid Yukon stuff, that's what it does. You can lock faders to this. And I know several people like for, for a while when I only had um, two services, I did this a lot. Like I would literally have different layouts that would be like dialogue, um, dialogue editing, sound effects, or I would have one that just be, I would have another one that'd be VCA. So I would just have all my different VCAs here. And then over here, all my tracks would be around. If I need to scroll through, I can scroll through. But generally speaking, all I wanted was these faders were always master VCAs and these would be whatever I opened up. So that means that, okay, cool. I can go into drums, no problem. I go on my drums, do my drum spill out. Cool, I come out of that and I know immediately that okay over here i can do whatever's up on the screen but if i need to get back into drums or if i want to jump to guitars i can just go right over here and double click and it's right there it's just a, a great way of working with those layouts there all right so i think i've shown enough navigational stuff here i'm gonna take a sip of water again if you guys got any questions please ask away Mm. All right, 
let's see let's see all right no questions no questions so i'm just trying to think is there anything about the the avid stuff that i did not cover that's really important to us um here on the screen you have um your let's see let's just put that up on the all right actually let's go where is you're there okay cool so like you got your different channel mode so again in channel mode you can literally go look at your inserts on a track you can see your input you can see eqs if you got a specific eq that you want to deal with dynamics if you had dynamics on a track and you see your sins panning information group information and also mix which is really just your output it's showing your output and then this icon here is showing your input and to assign here from the dock like for instance if i go to let's open up those drums and if we were to say we were tracking for the sake of tracking if i select my kick drum track here and that attentions it remember if i go to input then now if i hit configure i don't know if it's going to work in this particular session yeah okay there we go so we got into it so we just literally went here to input and now i can go on my interface and assign it to whatever input hit in and now that input is set for that particular track same thing if i go to mix for the output you see that's going to drums on the output but if i click there you see it's assigned a drum bus i could actually go here and reassign it and so i'm doing all that here from the surface i'm not having to leave the surface to control that and the same thing happens on the um the s1 so if i go here on the s1 and we got the kick selected and we do shift and we look at input it's showing me all the different inputs that are there and if i want to configure that i would just hold shift hit configure and then now i could go here and click that and then now instead of going to three and four, I'm gonna to go to one and two, select it, then I go back. And so now, now that's assigned to one and two. If I go here, see input, you see one and two. So very easy to do assignments of your input, your output, same thing with sins. If I go to sins and I wanna do something with a sin, hit configure, click on it. And then now I can go to my different buses and assign a sin from there. Go there, there's your pre fader, pre or post, you're in. If you're doing that over here on the surface, then you would literally go and um, hit shift. And then you got, you know, insert EQ dynamic aux. So you go aux mode. There it is again, right there. Select and get through it. So it's so much stuff that you can do here. So much customization. And, and again, like being able to see everything across the different services. But because we're kind of doing this from a, a standpoint of having one or two, or just two i'm going to turn that one back off and you see how quickly it just it just went down on this one here so now we're back on just having uh one and one so page through you see click right there so we're on the aux for kick i click into it then i can get into the panning for it then i go back all right and then I go to inserts and we go here and there is no insert on kick, but then the kick parallel does have an insert. Click on it. There it goes. Pops up on the screen. No problem. And let me bring back my view. All right, there we go. There's the view. If I can see that. Good, good. All right. Go back out of that. Click that. Take you back. Uh, you got another, let's go to sins, click on that. Cool. All right. Let's see. Um, of course, play, stop, all that stuff. That's all your usual stuff. These, uh, again, all these buttons are customizable. You got back and play, which I love. Um, and then you can do shift and Go to return to zero by default those are actually reversed but i prefer back and play being the default button and then the shift layer being return to zero because i don't need to return to zero that often fast forward rewind or navigate through uh pre and post roll is here by holding shift 
You got your different record modes or just your record button there, loop, loop record. So one thing about having surfaces is that I've, I've said numerous times is that sometimes these make you forget shortcut keys because you have everything in front of you, which helps you to move, move faster. Um, and then you don't have to remember as many shortcut keys that could be good or bad. It just depends on, you know, the type of environments that you're in on a regular basis that helps you determine if you want to do that. I mean, I know what the, you know, shortcuts for loop record and all that kind of stuff is. So it's not like I've completely forgotten them, but there's just some that's just really nice to have. Um, I talked about this in my video, the, you know, the automation features over here, being able to access all the different automation modes, including, you know, preview um, and punch preview and all that kind of stuff. So that's nice to be able to have that right there because I use those functions all day long and it's literally again remember in the settings we had this set to whatever track is attention so if i select there now i'm immediately on a different track we go to trim mode on that track but then we go to this track and right now we have i think due to all is selected yep that's what's on so we just turn that off and then now we can go into touch latch on that track but then we go to this track and maybe go to latch mode so you just literally just kind of just pays through and that's a group of tracks there uh, that's gonna do that to that. So we can go here and we go to our group spill and we see we got all our different groups there. If I suspend all my groups, we can do that there. And so now when I select one of these and I put this into latch mode, it doesn't affect anything else. Cool. Yep, touch mode on that. And then so boom, you can see touch, latch, and we see we're just jumping between the two different faders and the modes are changing based on what's selected. And notice that the dock is still blinking. That is a visual cue that we are in a spill mode. So if I go over here and I start trying to bank and I'm trying to figure out why in the world I can't get to my other tracks, this is an indication letting me know that I'm spilled. And so all I need to do is hit that button and now it unlocks this. So now it goes back to just being a, a regular attention fader. And then I can now scroll through all my tracks as needed. Cool, 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 cool. All right, sweet. Trying to think. Let me know if I miss anything, guys, because I don't want to move away from it if I, there's still something to cover or if there's something specific that you want to ask and see about this that that helps. Uh, one thing I know, like for me, like this move up and you know down. You think that's a, a thing that you don't need because you got your keys on the keyboard, but again, if you're already up here and kind of doing stuff, it's just really nice to not have to move your hands to do what you need to do. You just stay here. Or one reason I love this uh, being up here to be able to like move up and down my selections or uh, move to previous or next clip is because if I'm doing sound design type stuff and I'm working in Soundly or SoundQ, like actually actively searching for sound effects, it's really nice to be able to move my cursor around or select tracks within Pro Tools on the surface without having to click away from the app because you know if you're doing sound design and you're using something like Soundly or Soundmine or anything like that, there's a way to spot sound effects directly to Pro Tools by hitting key commands. And so I, if I'm doing sound design stuff and looking for sounds, I can stay within that app, control it with the keyboard, but I can control Pro Tools through the control surface. So it's a very nice way of working when you're when you're in between apps. The same thing I do with cracking if I'm doing some dialogue editing stuff. Uh, Pro Tools stays locked to the surface here and then I can use my keyboard and mouse for, for other things around there. And again, the other thing I just wanted to highlight again with the Avid stuff is just how customizable it is, guys. These buttons here on the dock, everything's customizable. The S1, all of these, soft keys down here are fully customizable. You go in here to the software and you literally can go and customize all the soft keys. If I wanna to go to the S1 color keys, I can literally go in here to commands and I've got all these different things that you can do. I mean, look at that. Every window, you can really get in here and lay this thing out for whatever you want. MIDI, your options menu, like your edit window scroll. Matter of fact, I have some saved for, for that. So um, I actually have on my horizontal touch strips, if you see no scrolling in page, that's literally because I very often like to switch between paging where the, the Pro Tools will page as you page or no scrolling. So it's very nice to be able to just have 
buttons right here that I can just touch. And these are not buttons, they're touch strips, but I can, I can just touch those and it's gonna change that mode, which you know, the only other way to do that, you could go up here into the options for this. Uh, you can go up here to your uh, edit window scrolling. You can do that here, or you could go up to options, edit window scrolling and do it there. So it's mu it's uh, multiple ways to do the same thing, but for me, this is easier. Like if I'm tracking vocals and they're tracking and it's in page mode, but I'm trying to make an edit, it's gonna, every time it moves, it's gonna make a thing. So I can go here, hit no scrolling while they're recording. I go over here, do the edit I wanna do, then I zoom back out and then I go back into page mode if I wanna go back into page mode, but it's very quickly to be able to access it right here without ever, ever having to go up here and deal with that. Like I don't like having to do keyboard mouse and click around and find things. I like making things easy. The more functions you use regularly, put them at your fingertips. That's that's how you get the best usage out of these things. And so I think I spent a way more time than probably was necessary on the S1 and the dock, but I really wanted to give a great overview of what these things can offer. And then we're gonna pull out the SSL stuff and kind of look do the same thing with that. We're gonna run through all the stuff it can do and we'll, we'll see the differences between the two and and all that. So give me a second here, um, you can ask questions if you wanna ask questions, but I'm gonna be um, kind of rearranging the desk here. I'm gonna pull the, the uh, SSL stuff out and get the Abbott stuff put away and we will see what happens with that. Cool, cool. All right. I need some, I need some theme music just playing, right? Now I'm gonna leave Pro Tools open and I'm also going to leave everything kind of just set, but I'm gonna turn these off. Now, one thing I'll mention while we're switching out stuff is you cannot run Yukon and SSL at the same time. So if you're trying to think about possibly doing both, it won't work that way. Um, if you're using the Yukon stuff, you're using Yukon because SSL requires Yukon to be off in order for it to do what it needs to do. So that also means that you can't use the Pro Tools app. So even if you were thinking, oh, I'll just use the free app for some of the stuff that Pro Tools can do with Yukon, but I'll still use the SSL stuff. It doesn't work that way. You have to completely turn Yukon off for SSL to work properly. I'm gonna turn this off, disconnect that there. Actually, I can just leave all this connected because the only thing I need to remove is the power and the ethernet. And now this whole unit can come with me. That uh, power is plugged into the, the dock. So you look here on the back of the dock, you've got your USB, which is for power for your tablet. You got the, the DC for the, the power to the dock, and then you have your ethernet and then your foot switch. All right, so let's move these out the way. this out of here. Try not to drop any cables because I sure don't want to be having to go up under the desk later. Now, one thing that I think I'm gonna have to do is update the firmware on these SSLs because there have been some updates recently, and I think the way I have these cables on my desk already, uh, let's see. I think this can go here. It's a USB cable. Yep, I need that. And there's a power.
power. Okay. All right, sweet. So on the SSL, you have a USB uh, C and a USB A, and their USB additional USB A is actually for daisy chaining these units, so you can daisy chain uh, UF eight to each other. And then there's two foot switches on the UF eight here, and then I believe the UC one only has one foot switch. So we're gonna plug that in. Oh, see that? There it goes. It's plugged in power. And I am going to plug in the USB. So there's one right there. Okay. And boom, bap. Ah, I know what that other USB cable was for now. And actually, where is right, so there's the okay. power cord. Yep, so power and then USB-C, which, okay, so there is no foot switch on the UC-1. Um, just power and USB-C, so you don't get a foot switch on that. All right, USB, and I think I need to update the firmware on these guys. All right, cool. So there we go. We've got the SSL stuff up. And I am going to slide this over, try to get this centered as much as possible. Boom. All right. We can see everything. Looks good. Yes. That light creating a glare. Let's see if we can move that up or out the way. Tell if that's good or bad. Yeah, you need to be able to see something, right? All right, let me know if that's too dark. Okay, so we've got the SSL up now, and first thing I'm gonna do is go into Pro Tools and turn off Yukon. Uh, nope, I don't need that. Uh, some of this stuff we can. All right, so we're disabling Yukon. And let's go to SSL 360. All right, update firmware. So I need to update the firmware. So let's go ahead and do that. all the lights look at that look at that i'll tell you what the ssl does have some cool powering up stuff all right so we see the us the uc1 the uf8 for whatever reason is not popping up it's definitely plugged in Unplug, plug in again. All right, UF8 ready. Oh, all right, so there we go. Update firmware. So there's more of an angle on these and you can kind of tell if I was to, uh, let's see, let me bring the, the uh, zoom out. So you see here on the, the dock, Matt can't see it, but the slant on these is slightly different. Um, the SSL is a little bit more aggressive and it definitely sits up higher 
on the desk. If I was to, uh, let's see, let's give you, give you this kind of view right here. Let's see. So you can see right over there, there's the S1 and then here's the UF8. So you can see the height difference between the two. The, U, the, the uh, Avid stuff definitely sits lower on the desk than the SSL stuff. See like, look at that gap right there. Like this, the Avid stuff lines right up with my keyboard, whereas the SSL is like about, about an inch difference. All right, cool. And now I want to go through, let's go into Pro Tools and go to Setup, Peripherals, MIDI Controllers. Now here's something, um, because these are Huey. So here's here's something to talk about. The Avid stuff, remember we talked about connects through Ethernet. Mackie Huey control is what the SSL stuff uses to connect to Pro Tools. Now, currently you can only do four devices in, in Pro Tools. So if you see here, I've got you know four slots for Huey. For me, usually three of these are already taken up because I can utilize uh, Huey to control my preamps from, from uh, my Dante preamps with Focusrite, uh, red net stuff. Those are Dante controlled preamps with Huey. So I usually, usually have these set up to be that, but for this purpose, there's nothing in there and we're gonna set up the SSLs. So that's kind of another note for people who have, you know, different things going on in their setup this uses Huey, which takes up slots. So the more you have, the more you're gonna have to set up. So we're gonna go Huey, predefined, and why is that not showing up? Okay. Let's see what's going on here. SSL. All right, DAW configuration. DAW one is Pro Tools. So you can have up to three DAWs set up in here. I only use Pro Tools, so that means I'm set up for here. See V MIDI ports one through four, that's right. Transport link to Pro Tools, because that's the only a DAW I have. MIDI CC link to Pro Tools, because that's all I have. And then you have your different settings. So you can see here, we can go to dark or full, same thing we had on the other ones. Uh, the time for the control services to go to sleep, this one's currently set to 20 minutes. Uh, then the UF1 time code display, I do not have a UF1, so that doesn't matter. And then plug in mixer, UF8, UF1, select keys for VSD3. You have track colors or be white. So it's kind of up to you what you want the select colors to be. Track colors just makes the most sense, especially since it looks like the Avid stuff, how I have it set up. So we've got that there. And then this tab is for SSL 12. If you had SSL 12, I do not, so we don't need that. And then that's your plug-in mixer that you would see if you were using the 360. And then here's your DAW control. And then here's another setting for UF1. So, all right, layers. You have different layers. Again, you can set it up for different DAWs. And then layer two could be a plug-in mixer. Okay, cool. So we'll set up layer two for a plug-in mixer. Auto scroll pl plug in mixer when banking UF8. Select parameter follows UC1, plug in mixer. So again, I don't have UC1, so it doesn't matter. Uh, follows UC1, plug in mixer selection. Then fader, touch, sense, selects channel. So the same thing we saw on um, the S1s to where you can have it to where if you touch a fader, that selects a channel. So same feature there. Okay. Uh, to configure UF8, go to Pro Tools, set up peripherals MIDI controllers, add Huey controller, set receive from to SSL V MIDI port one, set send to SSL V MIDI port one. Right, that's what you should have to do, correct? Peripherals, MIDI controller. All right, let me check some things. Go to setup and MIDI. 
input devices. Ah, here we go. Okay, we hit OK there. And then we go back into peripherals. And now, there we go. All right, so boom, there we go. There is our tracks and we can already see some activity going on here. Let me bring the camera back down. All right, cool. So right now it's showing me that these are in right automation mode. And if I click the bank button here, we are banking through our tracks. If I change it to nudge, now we're just, uh, actually, this right here can scroll through your tracks. Navigation is actually scrolling through the session. So if you notice the time up there is scrolling. And if I bring, you see the cursor is moving. Make that bigger or make a selection. See right there. So that's navigation. Nudge is now just nudging by increments. And then focus is going to put it in that focus mode I told you about. So that focus mode is cool because you remember with the um, dock, when I went into using that knob mode, it only worked with Avid stuff, but check this out. Here, it actually works with almost anything. So I'm gonna go here, select this clip, and then I'm gonna hover over this setting. Uh, let's see, hover over this knob and it's not working. So focus mode doesn't work right here, but if I go to VMR and I'm in focus mode, hovering over, doesn't do anything, click on it, doesn't do anything, click, doesn't do anything. All right. So that's not functioning. Go here, click, doesn't move. All right. Yep, that's on. All right. Pro Tools. Close plug in. Uh oh. Pro Tools frozen? I'm getting no activity. Y'all see this, right? All right, there we go. Pro Tools is playing. SSL. I'm going to the different modes. And it is locked up. All right, we live live. Y'all see that, right? Now, one thing I do want to check on the SSL is there's a shortcuts mode. Can't quit that. And, oh, look at that. The UF8 is no longer connected. It sees the UC1, but it doesn't see the UF8. So here, let me grab another USB cable, because we don't want to have a bad start, right? All right, let's unplug this USB-C cable, which is weird because I am pretty sure that is the cable that came with the unit. But that's why we have extras, right? All right, so UFH back up. So let's try that again, shall we? Let's click on this, hover over, there we go, you see it? All right, so that's working. I'm hovering and it's moving. And you remember the guide particle plugin wouldn't work with Pro Tools, so let's go to guide particle, hover, 
Look at that. So that is something that works way better here on the SSL. Pretty much, it just look at it works with anything, anything on the screen. Now here's an annoying one. I click that, and it's doing the Q. The Q is the automatic function that it goes to. Go to focus mode. So if I want to go to gain, I have to move my mouse, but still very intuitive. I mean, just move your mouse, go to what you want to go to, and then you got full control over that there. All right, no problem. So that's a nice feature. The focus there, then you hit the nudge. Again, that's nudging. You can see that's, if I have, I have something selected, so check that out. I have something selected and it's actually moving that selection in the background. So that's nice. All right, so undo, 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 undo. Where is? And this is a, session that I don't need to worry about. So, all right, so navigation, moving, nudging, bank, banks the surface. These keys down here, just another way for me to nudge through. So you can see it's nudging right there. Down is moving through my tracks. If I hit the, the button in the middle, now it's zooming the track heights and then left and right does the width. Okay, so that's that. And then we have, and now notice also right now, the UF8 is completely lit up. The UC1 is sitting here, not lit up. And it says no plugins. It, it does pretty much not going, I'm clicking, but it's got nothing to do because I have no plugins on the screen. So that is, this here is a plugin controller only. That is, this is for plugin control, whether it's SSL plugins or now in the latest update, it can be assigned to different plugins. So that is something that they did update, but we're gonna talk about that. Stay tuned, stay tuned, y'all stay right there. So we're here. So let's kind of go through and, and look at this thing and see, of course we got the fader that that's, you know, the same stuff that we're already used to. No problem there. Scroll. I like the wheel that you can scroll through all your tracks by using that, or you can use bank. This is pretty fast to get through a full session. And so remember now, right now in Pro Tools, we have most of our stuff closed up in folders, right? So let's go, let's say to keys. And I select keys, see keys, if I double click, it just goes to, to rename the track. I can solo, I can mute, but there's no way for me to open that right now. There's no way for me to do the whole spill thing on that particular folder. Now, if I go here to my different layers, I can see, okay, my layer one is Pro Tools and then layer two is for pro, for plugins. And that would be on, it's showing me bypass there, which I don't have anything on that track. So let's go to this uh, background track and see. Go to plugin, then we can hit bypass. Uh, it's not doing anything pre, so there's nothing. This is all about what I don't know. All right, cool. So back out of that, we're on track. And so if I want to open my track, we're going to go these quick buttons here. So window change, two is bringing up my transport, and three is bringing up my session setup. And if I want to change those, see your 360 button there, all right? So you got your soft keys, so your quick keys right here, you can change them. So right now it's alternating through the mix and the edit window, but here is all the DAW commands that it has access to. Not as extensive as a list as Yukon. Is Yukon still up, can we see it? Uh, no, we can't see it because nothing's connected. Maybe the app is up. Nope, app's not up because Yukon is off. Okay, so much less. And for, you remember back in play on the dock? Let's look here. I mentioned this on an SSL forum and they act like they didn't know what I was talking about. 
but we can see here in this list, there is no back in play here for me to assign to a quick key. There's return to zero, audition, audition pre, quick punch, There's also, there's sins, okay. I also don't see any automation stuff. So we've got suspend automation and then enable plugin. So it, all the automation enable stuff. So that's all the same stuff as this window right here. All your plugin stuff about how, what you would do there, but there's no preview and um, you know, all your different right to enabled, right to end, right to start all the stuff that we had on the dock. None of that's there. Your edit tool that could be there. Now you do have keyboard macros. Okay, cool. So I could set this up. Let's see. I don't need a button to open up the transport window. So let's turn that off and let's make this be, let me see, do they have a folder open? There's no folder open here. Okay. So let's go to keyboard macro. And then we're gonna do shift F. Okay. So now my key two, I can change the label on it. We're gonna do a uh, folder toggle. And so now that key is my folder toggle. So now if I do that, I can open folders with this button here. So not the same as being able to spill it out quickly by double clicking like you can on the Avid stuff or by touching on the app, but there is a way to assign at least a button to do that for you, okay? Cool, so we got that there. All right. That's VPOT mode. So this, this soft keys area over here is this different mode. So you got VPOT mode, which right now we can see pans on the tracks. And then if I select like the background group here and then I go to channel, we can see now we're looking at the sin. So I can see A, B, C, D, and E for my selected channel. If I go here, it's just showing me those sins. And then if I go to plug in and I'm on the backgrounds, I go to plug in. There's my first slot of plugins. Cool. Here is one of the things with the SSL. I only have four things open on SSL. Now somebody did tell me there's a way to change that, but I shouldn't have to do anything. Like it should, it should just work. Only four parameters. There's a page over here that shows me there's 32 pages that I can scroll through to see other parameters here. Plugin is on the one page is on that one. So we can, you know, control the plugin just fine there. Uh, we can see the name of the plugin, the insert slot that it's in. And then there's a compare button. So you got compare and then the bypass. I do like that there's a bypass and a compare button easily labeled there. Avid does not have that. You just have to know uh, where the bypass is and it actually does change per plugin. There's not a global universal bypass except for on the main insert page. So on back on the Avid surfaces, if we were on an insert, I'll just pull this one over for a second here uh, for the sake of talking about it. If we are on, we say we go to inserts and we we see our different inserts, this in button would be the bypass for it. But if you're already inside the plugin, that bypass button could be here, it could be here, it could be assigned to a knob, it's, it's not uniform. So I will say that I do like SSL's implementation here of the bypass button always being here, the compare button always being there. Doesn't matter which plugin slot you're on, that is what you're going to get every single time. So that is pretty nice to be able to have that there. But a downside for me 
is the fact that I can only see four parameters when I have eight encoders. Like if there's, I should be able to see all eight. I shouldn't need to go here to page through. I think you can use, nope, you can't use that. So you can only use it here. So you can page from here or you can page here. So it's two page buttons for whatever reason, but it would be really nice if I saw eight things here because having to page over every time I want to control more stuff is pretty annoying. Um, now I'm on plugins and I can't hit flip. I forgot to show you that, but on Avid services, you can hit flip and the plugin comes down to the flip. Let's go over to our sins. Let's go to a track that has some sins on it, shall we? And let's kind of try to use the control surface to navigate. Uh, let's see here. Let's close that plugin. Let's get the plugin off the screen. Can we do that? Nope. The plugin's not leaving the screen. Is there no way for me to get that plugin off my screen? Okay. So I've got to click on the plugin to close it. Is that is that what it's telling me? Plugin. Uh, that's pretty annoying. So it doesn't automatically close the plugin if I exit out of it. So I can jump between plugins here, but if I just completely get out of plugin mode, it doesn't show me on the screen that the plugin has been closed. So I've got to grab my mouse and deal with that. Let's see, I got a question. Where are you located at? I'm an ATL, man, ATL. So if you're an ATL and need an engineer, poster music, let me know, I'm here. All right, so close the plugin and I wanna look at the sins. So let's get over here to this track and then we're gonna go to the channel and we see the sins. All right, so here's send A. All right, so you click on the sends. Well, okay, you can touch them. You just touch it and you can see the level. Your pre or post button is here. And then flip. Okay, I just flipped something. Okay, it looks like the, a verb. Okay, so here's my verb right here. And just so we're 100% sure that's what's happening. Let's bring up the verb. All right, so there's the verb. So you see that slider is moving right there in Pro Tools. So that flipped. But what's weird is if I click on channel and now I can see all five sins for that. Even though there are eight sins technically, I mean ten. There's ten sin slots. Why can I only see five of them? If I hit bank, nudge. So it's not showing me all ten of my sins. If I hit flip, it doesn't flip. But if I go out of it, and then I hit flip, now it's showing it. And then I can click on the different ones here to change that. So let's just, for the sake of showing, let's throw up um, the verb on all of these. Okay, so now we're looking at pans. So I see my pans, if I hit flip, now you can see here's all those verb sins flipped for one. So we're on verb one and then slot two for send. There, cool. 
but that doesn't work if I hit channel. So channel mode is focusing in on whatever channel is selected at the time. And you can see the first five, but not the other ones. But ironically enough, if you come out of channel mode, you still have your eight slots here. So if I was to just for the sake of it, let's go all the way down to our 10 slots, excuse me. Well, wait a minute. There's only eight here. Pro Tools has 10 slots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can only access up to eight. So if I go here and I put a verb, we'll just put another um, fader there just so we can have it. So that's slot eight, right? Go flip. Okay, what what kind of what what is this? So I can only access five, but what about plugins? All right, let me put something in plugin slot number eight. Uh huh. Just put my Kirch off EQ, no problem. Okay, so now I'm on the Sopranos. Okay, I can own. I can access. That's plugin number one, right? Let's put a plugin in all these slots, guys. Let's let's see what's going on. Let's just let's just put a plugin. Just drop any old plugin. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, that's because I have Pro. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're just trying to see something here. Just put another EQ there. And throw any old thing. All right, and then nope. Good. Uh, I don't have access to that either. It's okay. We're just literally trying to see what's going on here. All right, so that's five slots, and then I'm gonna go to six and throw another plug-in on that slot. Okay, so we can see one, two, three, four, five is lit up blue. Six, seven, and eight are not lit up. So if I click five, okay, it goes to that plug-in. I go to four. Goes that plug in, no problem. Six, seven, and eight do nothing. Pro Tools has 10 plug in slots. So you're telling me I can only access five of my plug in slots from the SSL. Is that what we're seeing? Y'all are watching with me, right? Okay, plug in, click on channel mode. Go to channel mode, and that's showing me send. So it's not showing me plug ins. Go plug in, okay. Yep. That's for that track. Go to Sopranos All. So yeah, plug in one, plug in two, plug in three, plug in four, plug in five, six does nothing. Same thing with the sins. If I go to channel, I can see send A through E and I am missing F through J and I'm not seeing a way to get to that. Problematic. All right, so that's that. Uh, your pan knob is here. Your find button allows you to move in finer increments. So that's jerky. Here is a little bit finer. Same thing applies for plugins um, or sins. It just makes it a little bit finer. Like you can go very small steps by holding down find and let me show you that visually on the screen. So there's our verb. So you see right now, I'm just moving it all really nilly. If I hold down fine, you can see, even though I'm moving it pretty fast in large steps, it's still moving very slowly on the surface. So that's kind of cool to be able to do that there. Um, the Avid stuff actually just functions by speed but if you wanted to, you can hold down command in Pro Tools and do that. Y'all y'all should know that one already um, about doing finer adjustments. Um, let's see. Let's let's go into a plugin real quick. Let's just see. 
what happens. Plug in, okay. So the mid is either 100, high is our trim. Okay, wait a minute. So I can't control this plugin here. It's not giving me access to the plugin. There's no, there's nothing there. So what I could do on the SSL is go here to focus and I hover over this and now I can use this knob for that. Now does fine work for this as well? No, fine does not work for this. Fine is only for the panning encoder. Okay. Let's go to another plugin. Let's go to Kirchhoff EQ. Okay, so there's an enable and disable. Uh, I can't see how many pages on this one because there's so many pages, which is fine. Uh, let's see, let's go to band one. All right, and well, wait a minute. It's changing the different modes. Um, yeah, so this is, this is not laid out very good. All right, let me turn this up. Let me just see if I can see where that's at. Huh. Yeah, this is, uh, doesn't work well with Kirchhoff. Let's go to this, uh, let's see. Okay, I can see the time there, change different time modes. Uh, that's the only page there. I can get to the mix knob, but there's way more settings in here that I can't access. There's only one page for this. Mm. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so with the plugin open on the screen, I can see the settings at least. So even though I can't select it here, at least if I pull it up on the screen, I can see it. Okay, let's go to one of these other tracks here. I'm just, I'm just curious. Okay, so that's not giving me anything. What is going on here? Y'all are seeing this in real time. Y'all are working with me. Uh, so here's the input. Intensity. All right, so this plugin works. Delay. You can turn the delay on and off. The doubler. But then page over. Okay, there's reverb. On and off. Okay, so some plugins work, some plugins don't. Kind of, kind of what we're seeing here, right? I'm on the horns track, is where I'm at. So if I go to plugin slot three, okay. There's only one page on here for settings. I can see input, I can see output. I can turn the different bands on and off, but there's nothing else. I can't access anything else, so I have to use my mouse to at least go here and go to focus mode and that's not working. But if I go here, that's not working. Nope. Uh oh. Well, that's interesting. If I go to lustrous plates, it works on lustrous plates. Okay, so while I did say that their implementation overall was better with their focus knob, we can definitely see that not everybody plays nice. Okay, that works. The gain right here works. But if I go to frequency and Q, that doesn't work. Yeah, can't do anything there. So honestly, I would say they're both just as annoying with their focus features. Like it works when it works, but it doesn't work when it doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, I that's... That's a bummer. Okay, so same thing with, with both with both platforms on the focus um, knob situation here. But this this plug-in and sends thing is really sending me over here. 
All right, um, moving on. So that's pan mode, and that's VPOT. If we go here, all right, we got different soft keys. So up here now we're showing different soft keys. So like here's my transport controls, play stop, fast forward. I don't like them being up there. That's actually quite annoying to me that I have to reach all the way up there. I think there's a way to enable these keys to be transport controls instead of other controls. Let me see here. Send plugin, factory, user, automation, factory user. Okay, so we can do some stuff there. Uh, pan, uh, your Huey, always find pan, always find sends. Okay. So that means you just won't have to hold the find button if you just want it always to move finally. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Yeah, it'd been really nice to be able to make these buttons do something else. They're not. Uh, there's return to zero right there. Uh, loop playback. Uh, then layer two, they got quick punch. So that's your different um, record modes. Uh, so again, these are all stuff that they pre put in there. And then I program save on five. So same thing, you have to double click it. So it's the same, it's a Pro Tools thing with control services to double click. But if I wanted to change any of these, so like page five has really nothing on it. So I can go here to page five and I can make any of these be just a keyboard macro or a DAW command. Again, the list here is very, very small compared to Yukon of what you actually have access to with Pro Tools Yukon. You could literally access almost everything. Y'all y'all saw it. So that's a bad check mark in my end. But you do have keyboard macros, but not everything is available as a keyboard macro. Matter of fact, y'all remember when I showed you how to do the scrolling? with the with uh with yukon so let's see here let's see if there's a scroll command in here mm. no i'm not seeing it okay so if i wanted to change my scroll mode. Currently, I can't use a keyboard macro because there isn't one assigned, but in Pro Tools, we do have the ability to change that. So let's see if, uh, what is that thing called? No, it's not looking for. Um, Where is keyboard shortcuts? There we go. All right, so let's look for scroll. Okay, so edit window scrolling after playbacks. And okay, so these are the same options. So scrolling, no scrolling in page is what I had. So right now there's none. So I could go in here and make, I could double click and add a shortcut for that and then go in SSL and assign it to whatever that same shortcut was. So let's just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, let's see, double click and I'm gonna make it the clear button. There's a conflict. This is actually cool, it tells you when that's there. So let's reset that. Um, let's make it this guy. Nope. Oh, geez. What can I use? Scrolling page. What about shift P, huh? Nope, can't do that. So <laughs> there's so many quick keys in Pro Tools that are assigned to things that you may or may not use that even though you can do this, this it's it may or may not work for you because like this is set to extend insertion up. So if you don't use that, 
you could go to resolve and and make that happen but i don't want to tamper with that too much so that's kind of annoying that i've got to go in here create my own custom keyboard shortcuts to then have to go into ssl and assign that keyboard shortcut to a soft key if you're giving me the ability to assign soft keys with this dog commands thing i would like to see every single option that's available to me to be able to make it assignable. Yeah, you got these custom buttons up here, but if I'm limited on what I can actually assign to it, is it that customizable? Mm, not really. Kind of kind of limited if you if you ask me. Check my check my comments. All right, no comments right now. Good, good, good. I hope you guys are still tuned in and and seeing this um cuz this is this is definitely wild. Wild, wild, wild stuff. Uh, and did I lose my camera? I did lose my top camera. Look at that. Uh, give me two seconds. All right, all right. Up, oh, I saw a comment pop up. Give me, give me two seconds. Read something up here real quick. Is that gonna reach? Just reach. Okay, cool. All right, for the time being. Agreed on that. More than being limited feels like a task that was left undone. Yeah, uh, that that definitely. And again, I've I've mentioned this to SSL. Like I I've had conversations on their forums um, and in groups about some of the limitations, and they acted like they didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but this is this is clear as day. Y'all are y'all are seeing this right here, and hopefully somebody from SSL you know, gets on here. I do have a couple of those people in my friends list. So if they see this, then hopefully we can get some answers on this. But that is that is a very limited list of what I actually can assign to the soft keys. And then for anything else that I want to, if I need to create a custom shortcut for, it's if it's conflicting, I've got to spend time going through trying to figure out what I can replace it with and use to then have to go in and that that's just gonna slow me down like to be able to if i gotta if customization is not quick you know like i for instance i have a i have a stream deck here and i use soundflow soundflow is very very easy once you learn it to program stuff most of, a lot of it's drag and drop and like okay you want this to do that okay cool no problem it's very easy to do that this is very complicated like to to even set up so that that's a bummer um on on that, um, close that window. All right, let's keep trucking along here and seeing what other things we can find. All right, so my layers. So let's go to automation. Let's try to do some automation. So let's go to background vocals. All right, we selected that track right there and then Right here, we got automation buttons. And you see, they don't do anything, right? If I go here to selection mode, we're in normal mode, record mode, auto mode. So if I go here to auto mode, now these buttons are on. Again, a redundant step that to me, it doesn't make it like it's a weird kind of workflow that I have to do that. Um, my camera back on. Cause I really want y'all to see this. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, here we go. Boom. Come on, come on, give me access, give me access. Nope, don't do that.
Yes. And we want this to be here. Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's a bummer. All right, no worries. If this doesn't come back up, I got another plan. All right, there it is. Sweet. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let me run that back. So normal selection mode. So right now I'm in normal selection. If I select the track and I go over here to automation, these buttons aren't lit up. I can do nothing with them. If I go to auto, now I can use these. So now I can go into read mode or we're in currently in preview. Let's turn preview off. And now let's go to read. Uh, where are we at? Background effects. Okay, so we're on this track. So there's read, there's write, trim, latch, and touch mode and off. Now, to me, this is a this is a redundant step. I should just be able to select the track, click automation. Like I shouldn't have to select the track, hit auto, and then be able to change the mode. Like that if I know I'm in I've selected a track, I should be immediately able to automation. Like there's no reason why I need to go over here to deal with that. So, that's annoying. Um hold down on the button. 0 I feel like that should do yeah that okay record then i select and i can record on the track so if i go to this vocal it's not allowing me to select this track to record to is it because it doesn't have an input yes it doesn't have an input so let's see that's retarded though Okay, there's no reason to sign. There's no way to assign on here. Remember on the um, the Yukon surfaces, we could assign inputs from the surface. Here, there's no input page for me to be able to do that. So I've got to grab the mouse and go up here to input and set it. And then now I should be able to oh, record, select. That's not working. But if I go here, I selected that. Put that in read mode, okay. Why? Why you no work? Y'all see this, right? Record does nothing. Let's hold down on it. Nothing. Let me just click the record button here to make sure it's not Pro Tools something, okay. So that's doing that. Yes, okay. Why do I have to control click? What mode are we in? Okay, so let's try this. Let's go up here, hit this. Let's go to the page that has the control. So that's working. Now I am not sure why. Okay, there's no okay button for me. So you remember on the dock, there's an okay button. Here, there is no okay button. For me to hit okay, I've gotta use my keyboard. All right. So now that track is record armed. Uh, let me just see what's going on with the session real quick. Let me make a new track really quick. And I wanna go Scroll to it and record. Okay, so something about the way that that track is routed through a folder. So you just hit record and that works. But you have to be in this mode. If I'm in normal mode, this select button is only select. I have to go into record mode to hit record. So if you remember in Yukon settings for Avid, there was multiple modes that that button could be in. So that's not that big of an issue. 
double clicking brings it up to be able to type in the name of the track. Same thing happens on Avid. Uh, let's see here. So I want to bank back over, select the lead vocal, automation, then I could do automation or if I hit record, then I can go on and record. So you literally got normal record automation. These are different modes of how the select button works. All right, so plugins, situation, Hit 360, opens up 360. All right, let's move on from this guy because it is frustrating me. Let's move over here to this guy. So right now we can see that it's not on, right? We, we've been through this because the SSL needs, the not the SSL, but the UC1 needs a plugin to be open for it to do anything. Um, so if you thought this was gonna be like something that you could use for a bunch of stuff, not the case on this guy. Uh, the UC, the UF one is definitely gonna be more usable by itself. Uh, that's gonna tie in with, with this whole situation and it can do a lot more stuff. But this guy is a plugin controller. So that's the way to think about it. Previous to the recent update, it was only an SSL plugin controller, but now it can do anybody's plugins. Um, hold on. So let's put on this track and actually let's turn that record off and we're going to put a ssl plugin on this track actually let's put it on all of these tracks let's just throw in ssl 4kb why don't we All right, cool. So now we can see it's lit up here. I can see Soprano one. And then if I go here, it's trying to show me bus comp, but I actually just want to see my tracks. So opens up 360 and here's my channels. All right, so now I'm just scrolling through all the different channels that are there. And that would happen if I was in 360 or not. So it's still gonna sh gonna scroll through and do all of that stuff. Hit 360, pops up there. My faders are in Pro Tools mode for the DAW. And now I want to look at control and plugin. So close 360, and obviously these are mapped to those. So very nice. It's laid out in the exact way it should be laid out for this particular plugin. Everything is nice, beautiful. We know what that is. Your gain is actually here. And this is your input trim right up there. And then you could select the bus comp. If I had a bus comp in there, so let's see presets. We can go through and check presets. So I can go to like, uh, let's see vocals and we're gonna do uh, LA female vocal select that and so now that is put that on that and we can see it right there LA female vocal if I was to back out of this and go to soprano 2 do the same thing click on it presets and we're gonna do channel strip vocal and then let's just do uh vocal bus all right cool so we don't see that on pro tools right because that's not the selected track uh, if we go over to 360 that would be in there but if i go over here and i'm on normal select and we're going to select the sopranos okay that doesn't pop up so we select it let's open the plugin it's in slot number Four, right? Slot number four, soprano two. All right, there it is, vocal bus. So we see it right there. All right, so now that I've got that open like that, as I click on each one in plug-in mode, if I come out of plug-in mode and I select the tracks, the plug-in does not move along with it. I have to be in plug-in mode in order for it to move along with that. Now, cool. 
All right, we knew about that, Dale. That that that's what it does, right? Or if we want to do the bus compressor, let's go to our our master fader and let's throw on the bus. Uh, so SSL native bus compressor, boom. All right, cool. So now, if I back out of here, see. Like bus compressor, mix bus. Okay, so now I can control this plugin. So there's our makeup gain. Um, there's no way for me to return it to zero without just scrolling it. So it's kind of true like hardware. If I wanted to do that, I can go into Pro Tools here, do option, click on it, but there's no way for me to do it on the controller. Nope, no button to return it to zero, at least not one that I know of. There may be one but I am not familiar. So we're gonna just zero that back out. Threshold, so let's just play the track real quick just to kind of get a little bit of sense when we see it. And you can see the meter up here works. So that's kind of a cool little visual aid on the control surface that you see your compressor working. Let's turn our attack all the way up. Put our release on auto, ratio. All right, so that's that. You have a mix knob down here. You can see in the middle, there's an oversampling button. There's no um, knob on the surface for that. So if you want to deal with oversampling, you gotta do that here in the control surface. Um, you do have your in right there. And then we go back out of the play and stop. So there's play, there's stop. Okay, so now that I've got some tracks in, in here, I see my transport controls. So it does give me that. And I can scroll through the different channels right there very easily. So cool, we got that down, right? Let's look at assigning any plugin. So now I'm gonna go here to the virtual mix rack. And now I need to go into 360 and y'all are learning this with me. Um, I did not practice this beforehand. So we just want to see how easy this stuff is. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, I want to go into Okay, there's my. Okay, let me see here. All right, look at this. So, when you have an SSL plugin on the track, I can see multiple parameters but when you're dealing with any other plug-in that's not the case and matter of fact when i'm in a ssl plug-in it actually isn't allowing me oh, oh, okay plug-in Okay, so there's, these, there's different layers. So you got this layer, which is Pro Tools, this layer, which is plugin, but specifically SSL, right? Okay, there's that. All right, so let's see, let's let's find out what I'm doing wrong, because I'm doing something wrong for this assignment. This assignment should be super easy to do. That's that's how they showed it. They showed it being super, super easy to set this thing up. Okay, so send plugin, and then you go to user.
Okay. Flip. Okay, so your sin plugin mode, you got a factory settings, and then you have user mode to where you can make those buttons do other things. But again, you're still limited to only their DAW commands or their keyboard shortcuts. That is not what we want. We want to see about what do you think of using the SLUC1 in conjunction with the S1? The issue with that is that in order to use SSL, you have to deactivate Yukon. So you can't use them at the same time. They have to be either or. It, it, it's not, you can use them both together. Even the free app won't work because once you turn off Yukon, everything Yukon gets disabled. So that's not possible currently. Maybe they'll fix that, but currently it is not something that you can do. Good question. I tried it. All right, let's get over here. Oh, you know what? I need to open up 360 link, right? Where's the, all right, you know what? Hold on, I think I know. I think I know what I'm doing. I think I know. Let me see something. Let me open up link. Matter of fact, I think Pro Tools was open when I did the update. Yep, because y'all saw me do the, the firmware. So let's do this. Let's close Pro Tools and restart it. And here's a fun one. So, because I have a stream deck with Soundflow, I am just gonna do that. And Pro Tools will launch. No moving the mouse. All right, let's check the comments while we're waiting on Pro Tools to launch. That's a bummer. However, on the live stream, I'm kind of making my mind to the Yukon side. Yeah, man. Um, I, I didn't want it to be that easy. To, to, to choose it, but once you see the functionality and you, you're you watching me work, like, so you're seeing me do these things and it becomes very clear which one is more efficient and just user-friendly. Like a, one that comes up to mind, right, that we just talked about was the whole selection mode things. Like if I select a track, and there's automation buttons here. Why can't I just go ahead and press the automation button? Why do I need to be in an automation selection mode? That that intuitively does not make sense to me. Like I wouldn't think that um, in my mind. And the thing about these surfaces is one, yes, you should read the manual. You should, you know, watch as many tutorials and that you can find uh, all that kind of stuff. But two, I think there should be some intuitiveness to it. It, it shouldn't be, you got to think, most people are already in their, their, their roles. They've been engineering for X amount of years. They've been using hardware, doing all the things. And so if they're gonna put this into their workflow, it needs to make sense. Matter of fact, that's one reason why I know people personally that never got into the Stream Deck thing because they tried it, they pulled up SoundFlow, and in the early days of SoundFlow, they didn't have the integration directly with Pro Tools or Logic, so you had to make every single button. It wasn't anything already pre-made. So the learning curve was too difficult for them and it ultimately slowed them down because the learning curve was so, so much that they decided they just, they just couldn't do away with it. So for me, I feel like that's the thing here. It's not intuitive enough to just use it um, as is. You have to go through and learn it all the little quirks and the combinations kind of like playing a video game. Oh, up, down, up, down, A, A, B, B, left, right, left, right. Does the, the trick. Well, 
I don't want to do that. I just want to be able to hit a button. All right, automation, go. Automation, boom. All right, plug in, boom. Like, I just want to be able to move quickly um, and not have to do too many steps because the more steps I have to do on the surface, then I might as well just be using the keyboard and the mouse if I got to do a million button clicks just to get to one function. But that's just me. An extra step just for the sake of it. Exact, exactly. That is what it feels like. It feels like an extra step just for the sake of it. It doesn't, it, it just is not intuitive enough for me. All right. Pro Tools is opening back up. Uh, you got your, uh, while we're over here, solo clear. Let's see. So if I have something solo, let's see. You know what? This is annoying. Not having an okay button on the surface like I do on the dock is annoying it means i have to go over here and do that okay so now if i go to this track and i put okay 360 link okay so now this is how you assign the ssl you have to put the 360 link plug in on a track, so it's gonna take up a slot, right? Then you don't use your existing plugin. You gotta click to load, open plugin library, VST plugins, let's scan. So now it's gonna scan for all my VST3 plugins. I should have some because Resolve uses them. So I make sure I install them. All right, so that's gonna take a second. So let's chat. Um, if anybody got questions, pop your questions up while we're waiting on that to do its due. But um, yeah, man, um, we we can already see several differences between the two platforms. You know, ease of use, um, options. The the soft keys is a big one for me. Being limited in the list of soft keys that are available to even program things for feels like a, a short sight to me. Like the whole point is you, you can't tell me that I've got customizable soft keys, but then you limit me on the things that I can assign to them. Inside of Yukon, I've got access to pretty much every single thing that there's a menu for up at the top of Pro Tools screen. There's a way to assign it in Yukon. Everything that's on a track, all the views, the rulers, your market, everything that's there, all the features in Pro Tools, there's a way to assign it in Yukon. Here, I'm limited, and the only way to get around the limitation seems to be to use the custom keyboard map mapping in Pro Tools. But we saw that if you try to do something that's already attached to a Pro Tools shortcut, now you've got to go through the process of figuring out either another key to assign or what to switch the other function that it was assigned to to so it doesn't conflict with the new key that you're trying to assign it's just too many steps again we're back to using SoundFlow and stream deck it's like yo if i gotta do one too many steps then i'm not gonna do it because even programming my sound flow like i'll stop in the middle of the day to take two minutes to make a program of a button on SoundFlow. if i notice that i'm starting to open up a plugin a little bit more than than often then I'll go ahead and make a button for it because I know me taking two minutes to make that button is going to save me who knows how many minutes throughout the day because I keep opening that same tool numerous times. Over here, I'm going to probably lose good five minutes, you know, maybe 10 minutes trying to figure out what keyboard shortcut combinations that I can use to make that function work because stuff is just overlapping. <laughs> just it's 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 annoying. It's very annoying to have to deal with it. I thought they made some of this stuff better in the recent update, but clearly they have not. Uh, let's see. This is kind of what happened with Reaper. Some of the defaults don't make sense, and some of it has to be user modded. Anyways, you can essentially build your own DAW, but I want to make music. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing, man. Like, customization is great, but the more complicated that customization, then it makes it less great because 
you're giving too many options. It's the same thing we talk about plugins. Having too many plugins sometimes can be a hindrance to work because you're constantly looking through hundreds and hundreds of plugins when you should just grab whatever the first thing that comes to mind and rock with. That's why I love the, the search function in Pro Tools for plugins to where I just click on it, type in the plugin, and it will bring up what I'm thinking of because I, I if I look through the list, then I'll be sitting there for 100 years trying to figure that out. And I know a lot of people that use Reaper with the Pro Tools skin on it. I'm like, who are you fooling? <laughs> If you want to use Pro Tools, just use Pro Tools. Like, why, why, why put the skin on? If if Reaper is that good by itself, use the default skin. Why we gotta put makeup and lipstick on it to make it look like something else? Like, it it, it ain't that great if you gotta do all that. Hmm. I'm, I'm I'm saying. Can't ever control app do the same functions and the Dock S1 S3 as the Soundflow setup? Can't you? program the Yukon the same macros as Soundflow. You can. So yes, you can absolutely do the same um, things with Yukon that you could do with Soundflow, but Soundflow is a little bit simpler to me than Yukon, especially when you get to trying to do like keystrokes, because I don't know if you were on when I was doing some custom keystrokes earlier, but some of the, the combinations of hitting enter here or shift here, like you have to do them a certain way inside of Yukon, whereas in Soundflow, you can actually, let me move, can I move this over? SSL, oh, it's just gonna scan for plugins in my way. All right, cool. So let's uh, take a look at this real quickly. Sorry, this thing's gonna be in our way for a second, but it makes sense. So, here inside of Soundflow, when you go to do something, let me just go here and make a new, um, go to launch applications just so I can make a new macro. So now I can do, um, we'll just say um, test just for the sake of it. So now I can go in here and add, oh, let me make this smaller just because this SSL thing is in my way. Trying to teach here, guys. Okay. So add action right here. And so I can do something like um, press keys. So now you record the keystrokes in. So you hit record and you say, all right, cool. I want you to hit enter type in intro and then enter again and then stop. And so now I'm going to assign that to my, uh, let's see. Will it work on my general? I don't know if it'll work on there because it can't see uh add to deck i just want to do it somewhere where you can see no i don't want it on obs ah finder deck okay put on my finder deck so it'll be on my my home page yep and so you see there's a test button right there i could rename it if i wanted to um but we're just gonna leave it so now I go back into Pro Tools. Uh, yes, yeah, send that to UAD, please. And now, ah, okay, that's over there. If I go here on my Stream Deck, and Pro Tools is thinking, so ah, this may not work because we are inside of Pro Tools at the same time of it scanning VST plugins inside of Pro Tools. All right. Let's try it and see what happens. So my cursor is here. And now I am going to 
You know what? I think we got enough plugins for now. Can we cancel this? I think we got enough plugins to do the test. All right, cool. So I hit test and you can see it just did the intro for me. So you see how quickly it was for me to be able to write that. So I could go in here and just keep making custom macros, different that like I could do this all day long. And then like there's other things that I could do. Like if I want to put a new button here, I can add a new macro or I could do a whole script. But we'll just say um, one of my favorite things to do um, is launching applications. So, you know, let's say launch SSL 360. <laughs> So I can hit OK on that, add action, and we're going to say launch application, and then I go and I select the application, SSL 360. And so now I've created a button that will launch SSL 360, and if I wanted to, I could put an icon on there. So I could go over here to the finder and type in SSL, get to the folder. No, I don't want the uninstaller. I want 360. All right, so we'll get info, go up here to the picture, click on it, copy the picture, and then go up here, click set icon from clipboard. Now I've got a icon, boom, that pops up. Then I can add it to my finder deck. Okay, and there it goes. So now I've got a nice little button on here and this one I want to use command icon. So I'm going to delete that one. Yes. So here's my launch SSL. And then you probably can't see it. Uh, let me see. If I go to this camera over here, maybe. So now there's that button right there for launching SSL 360. Click it, there's SSL, just popped up on the screen. So it's very quick once you kind of get through it and figure out how to do it, it becomes very simple to do those things. And you see I've created a bunch, these are all like my custom stuff and different launching applications, audio suites, and I'm, I'm still going through and programming stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that by default is already in there that is so easy. Like there's a whole isotope situation in here. Um, so yeah, I, I love Soundflow. It, 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 it makes it a lot easier. And Avid uh, Yukon programming for the keyboard mappings is a little convoluted. I, I can be honest about that. Um, and they know it, they, we, we've had conversations in, in forums and the beta group about some of that stuff. It's not as simple as this is is with the drag and drop and just you know doing it you have to go in and manually do a lot of stuff here in the soft keys area so like command and then you know we could go in here and do like yukon preferences but again you see all of these things that are available to you and this is from Soundflow right now, because that's the application that's open. All right, so back to this whole SSL situation. All right, let's do it. Sup, sup, what's up, man? What's up, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let me answer these last questions before I get back started. When investing in Yukon, what would you buy first, the dock or the S1 or even a second hand S3? Ooh, that's an interesting one. That's a that's a very interesting one. Great question. Um, if I was just investing and I had to buy one, if you find a good deal on an S3, maybe because you can still utilize the app on a, a phone or a tablet without the dock. You don't need the dock to use the app. The app runs by itself without the dock. So the S3 with just the application is nice. But I could also say the same thing about the S1 and having a tablet because you could put the tablet on top of the S1 and have that. Um, the dock, I love the dock because of all of the, the automation 
buttons that are right there. Um, the transport controls, it's, it's, it's the layout is it's great on that. Um, the scroll wheel, I use that a lot. But I also love faders. Um, I, I cannot mix with the mouse. I, I really, really, really don't understand how people mix with the mouse. I mean, you can only control one track at a time. If I'm working with drums, I wanna be able to, you know, put my fingers on the faders and actually mix the drums. Like I can't do this whole click one track at a time. Let me automate that. All right, next track, let me go to that, automate that. No, 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 no. I wanna use all 10 of my fingers and ride the faders. That's how I like to work. So if I had to buy one, it would be the S1. I would buy S1 and then put the tablet on top, not with the um, the meters on it. I would just use the tablet with the control app to access all the other functions that I would have. So yeah, I, I would get an S1 and, and do it that way. Great, that was a great question. Great question. Nope, just got on okay, sounds cool. I have an S3 and doc. I will do more research on the SF setup. Anything that saves time on board. Yeah, man, definitely the sound flow integration. It is a subscription. I know people got their feelings about subscriptions, but if it helps, it helps. I, I don't mind paying for stuff that helps me out. Uh, it's a tax write off. So you just write it off and, and be done with it. I pay yearly for most of those kind of things just so it's not a, a, a monthly thing. It's just literally a line item in the CapEx for every year. Those things just come out and I'm done with them, I don't think about them. So yeah, there's that. All right, let's go back to this 360 thing. So here's a note. You have to use 360 to do the plugin programming. You can't just pull up a plugin. All right, let me pull the screen back over. Can't you pull up a plugin and use the UC1? Doesn't work that way. You have to use Link. So we'll open up Link, now click to load, and so now I can see a list of favorites and then I can open my plugin library. And so let's see, can I search? There's no search. Okay, so I gotta scroll through this entire list. I can't just pick a plugin. I can save favorites, but I can't. Okay, yeah, I didn't, I didn't search through everything. I was trying to see if um, the SSL, or not the SSL, but the Wave Tune, not the Wave Tune, Fresh Air. I'm trying to see if that was here, but it's not here. So let's just grab um, the Fairchild 660, okay? Double click. All right, so Fairchild 660 is up. And now, open the window for the plugin. It didn't open up by itself. And now if I click on this, now I can assign it to that. Click on this, click on that. Oh no, that's linked. Okay, let's do this. Oh, why is that? No, okay. Left input channel. Okay, that's weird. Let's see, left threshold. Okay, hold up. Clear this link. All right, maybe that's what it was. Ah, okay, so you have to clear it every time. It's not like MIDI to where you can just program over it and it automatically knows. All right, and then you click on this and you do that. So two ways to program it, you do that there. So you literally can go through here, customize it, and it automatically remembers it. Um, and then you can set it to automatically open hosted plugin when you do it. Cool, no problem. So that's link there. Um, if I go to the next track. Oh, nope. Okay, I'm scrolling through the track. Okay. That's weird. Okay, there's 360. The plugin window. How do I, I can't exit out of the plugin window without clicking the mouse? Okay, the end button does that. So I have to click the mouse, 
close the plug-in, okay? So let's open up another 360 on this track. And then we're going to open up just any old thing. See, analog channel, double click. All right, so cool, because I turned on the automatically open hosted plugin, it did that there. All right, so now we're gonna move this over here. And again, you can click to assign. All right, click, do that, do that. That's great. You can touch the thing to assign it there. So you can either touch it on the control surface and then click the item, or you click the item and then touch it on the control surface. So that's cool. And then like here, you can go in and rename it. So it, it names it based on what you clicked on. So input, output, drive, curve, so at least you can see what they're assigned to according to the plugin, that's that's nice. But that, that still ruins it for me because I have to look up to do that. On the surface here, if I went into a plugin, let's see, what track are we on? We're on Soprano 1, so let's go to Soprano 1. Oh, where is okay soprano one and we're in select mode plug in nope that was okay so here i can at least see a one that parameter doesn't mean anything so let's go to a plug in where it actually works all right so threshold i can see threshold i can see ratio so i can see the names of what i'm controlling right there i don't have to go into a separate plug in to see that. So now if I go here and then I go and plug in layer, okay. So analog channel. So that's my sins. Okay, so I can see the plugin that's on the track, but I can't access the plugin. Now y'all see this, right? I can't, there's no way for me to click on that, um, let's see, confirm, nope, that's the play and stop. Um, let's see, hit that, plug in, okay. Click. Okay, so there's no, okay, that opened up. What did I hit? Okay, that's on, but now, Okay, I can control it. So it remembers what you set up. Okay, so that's cool. But I have to, again, I have to look up or I have to just memorize what happens here. Now, here's another thing that I think is going to um, help you out with this as well. If I go to, let's see if it's in here. What's crazy is I didn't click favorites. I never clicked, y'all never saw me click favorites. I just double clicked to open them, but I never said I wanted them to be favorites. Like that's weird. Okay, so let's go to multiband comp here. If I hit back, nope, it didn't replace it. So how do you add a plugin? I can't use the arrow keys. So I got a click low plugin. I can't double click on it. If you load a new plugin, we'll reset all non adamant control. Okay, so that's fine. Okay. So that's here. So like comp type. So maybe I'll set that to this guy. So now I can scroll through my different comp types. Okay, that's cool. And then if I go here, here, let's just make this the same. So this is threshold. And then, well, that ruins it because there's no makeup gain. Because this is the fader, all right? Yep, that's the fader. All right, so this is my threshold. And time constant is the closest thing to ratio on these types of compressors. And so I'll make this the output gain. Okay, cool. 
So let me go to a different type of compressor. There's my threshold. There's my recovery. So that's not my attack. And there's my makeup gain. But I didn't assign anything to. Okay, so that I can assign to that. Now let me go here to attack and put that down here on range. Okay. And so now if I go to a different compressor, I got my threshold, got my gain. And then, oh, wait a minute, there's no tech. And that's release. So I got to make another assignment for the ratio. Okay, so now there's ratio. All right, go to another one. Threshold. Nope, that's not gain. Output gain. All right, right there. Peak reduction, gain, okay, threshold, recovery, gain, attack, ratio. So that works across there. Okay, no problem. Cool, right? If I need to do that for another plugin, what do I need to do? Add another 360 on that track. I can't put the plugin on the track. I got to put 360 on the track. And then, all right, let's go into it. Let's go in here and let's get the, um, I'm going somewhere. Stick with me. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Uh, give me, uh, what am I, a thousand do it for me? All right, let's go. All right, so let's resize. So to make this intuitive, I can't necessarily because of the way it's laid out. So let me try to see if I can, let's see, let's make that. No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. That doesn't make sense. I wanna do Okay, threshold, we'll put here. Ah, release, you can put the, like, so this is very, even think about where to put this stuff is a whole mind thing that you gotta kind of figure out. So I'm just gonna go here, hold on, let's just do, um, right click, clear all links. All right, so let's just clear all those links and let's just go low pass, and threshold. All right, so there's that. Click on that. I'm just gonna go down one by one. We're just gonna make this simple, all right? Cool. What? You can't control that? Oh, that's whack. Wait a minute, limiter mode. I want to be this. Okay, there we go. All right, sweet. Knee there, release there. Um, if I want to turn the snap on, I'll use the, wait a minute, why is it? Uh, snap. Okay, why is that? That button doesn't stay in. It's, it's not allowing me to make that snap. So that doesn't make sense because if I want it to be on, I want it to be on. Okay, uh, let's see, what else we got here? Now I've got all my different, um, okay, so let's put you here, 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 and now I gotta jump over. I can't use the compressor section. The compressor section is only for the compressor. Okay, I can use that gain right there. Then this, can't use that. Use ratio, use that, I can use that. Now, how am I gonna remember that? Like, in a day-to-day, -day, if I'm moving through, pulling things up, 
I am not going to remember that that is that plugin. And then my plugin slots. I'm still not grasping. I can see the 630 ultimate compressor there, but all right. So here's my ML 8000 here. Okay. Here's the different slots. Okay. But no, on this track, I had two things. I've got the 630 compressor, and then I also have the ML 8000, right? So if I select that, where's the plugin? Okay, here we go. Comp release, comp threshold, output, input. Okay, I can see that. But where's the plugin? The plugin is not popping up on the screen. So if I want to see it, I click on it, bring it up. That's annoying. Uh, let's go back into Pro Tools later. Let's just see something. Let's make sure I, maybe I'm doing something wrong, right? Let's always just check and make sure I'm not doing nothing wrong. Okay, so those are the Pro Tools plugins that are in on the inserts. But the link, because they're on 9 and 10. Ah, okay, hold on. Let's move these up. All right, so no, it can't be in those slots. It's got to be over here. Okay, so now I go to one plug in and we're on, let's see, Sopranos all selected. Okay, so there's, so that works. So if it's in slot one and I can select it here, Slot two, all right, there. So it's got to be in the first five slots because remember, you can't access six, seven, eight, and then there's not a button for nine and 10. So if you do that that way, it's there, and then you get back into it, and that's there. No problem, right? Okay, let's do one more of these because I I hope one of these, I'm really trying, I'm, I'm trying to show you something. I think you're already getting it. I think you're getting it. But I just I gotta show you one more thing. I really wish I could search. Like there's why can't I just search? This is annoying. Uh what is it called? What is it called? What is it called? Kirchhoff. Which it's not that name. It's what you call it, Kirchhoff. Uh and maybe it didn't scan it yet. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, okay, it hasn't scanned it yet. I'm trying to think, what's another one that does everything I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show? Um, oh, um, what is this joint? Oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, A E A E A E A E A E A E six hundred. All right, cool. Click to load because if you double click, it saves it to your favorites. All right, here's here's the money right here. All right, let's see. Active. Nope, can't do that. Assign the input. Assign the output. Nope, actually, that doesn't make sense. Because this plugin actually has a high pass and a low pass. So it makes sense for this to be the high pass and for this to be the low pass, which then means my input needs to be this, but my output is automatically set to the output fader. So if I want an output on this plugin, I got to assign it to something else. Ugh, okay. Let's just put you over here. All right, that doesn't make much sense. All right, so here's our high frequency gain. All right, and then here's our high frequency frequency. All right. 
and then let's see our solo button. We'll make this bell curve. I don't know if that makes much sense, but we'll do it anyways. All right, and then the Q for that is gonna be here. And then the different modes, which you can't do there. So your EQ mode, you would have to go here and make it, nope, that's already something. Okay, so there's the EQ mode right there. All right, so that's the active side, right? Now we gotta go to the, to the fixed side and program that too. All right, and then the fixed EQ mode, we're gonna assign here, okay. Now, again, th now this right here is assuming that you actually use all these things and you want them assigned. Like you, you want the active EQ and you want the fixed EQ to have controls for them and therefore you're assigning them. Uh, let's see, what is this? Active two, and you see there, there I still haven't even done the, the, um, the dynamics stuff down here because this is a dynamic EQ and a fixed EQ. So let's see, active, uh, let's see, active EQ mode. Uh, nope, I gotta go right here, okay. And then now we're gonna jump over here, do that. Y'all can, I mean, this is taking forever, right? This is, this is taking forever just to program this thing. And I'm already down to my last encoder and I've only gotten through two bands of this EQ. There's four more bands that I need to program, but I can't. And there's no page function. So I can't even page over and start again. I can, I, I, I'm limited to the amount of controls that are here. I'm also limited here by which plugins I can access. And, and now that I'm in 360, okay, so I can get to some of the functions here, but still, no, it's not everything I need. I'm still missing. That's four. Okay. All right. So here's ban. So that's my Kirchhoff. No, I don't want Kirchhoff. I want this one. Okay. So yeah, I'm limited and I can only see seven pages of this plugin's parameters here. So even without link, I'm only, I can only see seven pages and these seven pages are useless. They're not showing me half the detail that I actually want to see on this track. Yeah, man, uh, that, that, that's it. Like you, you see the situation here. The concept is way better on paper than application as I anticipated. Yeah, man, um, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's cool. But I saw one video of how they did it and I immediately saw the problem. And this is the problem. You only got a fixed amount of, of knobs here and they're not allowing you to go past that fixed amount of knobs. And when you have plugins like this, you think about all the people that use FabFilter um, EQ, like how many settings does FabFilter have? To be limited on what you can put on the control surface, that ruins the whole point of having it. Uh, you should be able to access it. Even on the Avid, we'll, we'll go ahead and give the, the, the slap on the wrist because you have to page through, but that's a matter of how many surfaces you have if you're using S1s, Artist Mix, uh, S3 even. S3 does have the two layers so that you can get more, more on there. You can do custom mapping on these guys as well. But um, if you're using an S4 or an S6, now it gets interesting because now your fab filter can span out across 
the entire thing on an S6 or S4. Now, obviously, that's outside of this discussion because that's a completely different price range. But functionality wise, it makes sense when you when you see all that you can do there and how much things can spread. But again, even on the S1, this plugin would still map better because I can see more things just by paging through. So the conclusion, um, if you're a Pro Tools user, Huey is still limited inside of Pro Tools, clear as day. Only being able to see five inserts, five sends when there's 10. And matter of fact, there's eight buttons here, but you can still only access the first five because of the Huey limitation, which I'm assuming is a Pro Tools Huey limitation, but still, nonetheless, it's a limitation in this particular conversation. Um, the a, a needing to hit multiple buttons for like the automation, knowing um, the flip thing is, is weird implementation of flipping to faders for sins, um, having to come out of the channel. Like, again, let's, let's do it. Look, we're, we're here, right? Let's do it. We're, we're talking about it. Let's do it. So let me close this up because there's no way for me to close it without grabbing my mouse. I can't just click on anything in the session on, on my control service and just back out of it like I can on Yukon. I got to actually physically click, which defeats the purpose. All right. Now let's go to my sins. So I'm on the channel right here and I can see send A, B, C, D, and E. So I can see all those first send slots. If I hit flip, nothing happens. If I come out of channel mode and I hit flip, now I can see something, but that's, I still have to swipe through. So send one for all faders, send two for all faders, three, four, and then I come out of flip and then we're back. Again, intuitively, doesn't make sense. If I'm in channel mode, I can see my sins right here. I should be able to hit flip because flip is whatever is here goes to here. That's the intuitive way flip works. So the fact that I can't do that here, I got to back out of that just to get to just regular, whatever normal selection mode is. And then now I can select here and then flip that is just, I mean, I guess if you use it enough, you'll figure it out, but intuitiveness just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, this is a great practical demo that people need to see, though it's very easy to get hooked in by the flashy marketing. You're doing a great service to your colleagues here. I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate it. That, that was a whole point, man. It, it definitely, and again, Avid knows that they've been a little slack on the marketing side when it comes to the control surfaces. Um, you know, because the big boys, they buy them. Like, they buy them, and they have them, and they work in the post houses, they work in the, the major studios, and they just, they're there. But the, the smaller market got flooded with the SSL marketing. SSL came in and flooded the internet with, with their marketing um, and the control service. They're not bad. I mean, they feel great. It is a good build quality. If you use a lot of SSL plugins, the UC one, I could definitely see that being something you use if that's all you're going to use. Because again, you can't use the UC one and a Yukon surface. So you can't blend the two worlds. You, you're going to be one or the other in, in this, this regard. So that that's kind of a knock. On that, I guess you could technically say, okay, you get like console one from um, soft tube or, you know, maybe the Behringer X touch for faders, you know, or some other Mackie control again. So whatever limitations their Mackie implementation has. And, and a note about the Mackie thing, the limitations on one side, SSL and people will say, it's a Pro Tools limitation, then Avid will say it's a Huey limitation. But then I've talked to people that had older 
QE services like the Mackie, um, Mackie Control, uh, the old Pro Mix IO from M Audio. That was Huey Control. I can't remember if my 002 was Huey or not. I think that might have just connected through Firewire. No, no Huey required. But things like the flip and send and all that kind of stuff, there were things that those controllers did even back when that were Huey that they could do that this one seems to not do or doesn't do very efficiently. And so is it a Huey limitation or is it an SSL programming limitation? I don't know. I, I don't know that much technical stuff to be able to say whether or not. All I know is me here using it hands on in person is, is showing the limitations of how limited it is. I, I can't have only five sins available. The flip thing is annoying. Um, the folder, opening folders, and it's spilling out to the console, that's that's important to me. I, I, I use that feature a lot. So I really, 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 really think if you are a Pro Tools user, Pro Tools, I can't speak for Logic, can't speak for Reaper, none of that stuff. Pro Tools. You got to use Yukon. The SSL thing does not work unless you're okay with just using faders, unless you're okay with the UC1 only mainly working for SSL plugins. It kind of works with other stuff, but you have to use the 360 link, which means you have to use VST3 plugins. You're not using AAX plugins. That's another situation. I, hey, VST wrapper. That's what, that's what it is. It's a VST wrapper, pretty much. Take it or leave it. Um, that's clunky. I mean, even looking at the session, like look at look at this. Like look look up on the screen. Where 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 are we at? I am doing a terrible job. <laughs> uh, but right here. So instead of seeing plugin names, I'm seeing 360 link. How in the world am I supposed to know what that is? Like, I don't know if there's a way to change that, but I would figure that that's getting into Pro Tools land. I don't think there's no way for this thing to communicate directly. So here, if I'm in 360 here, I can see it. Okay, let's just see something. Let's see, I'm on here. Can I click it? Can I see the plugin? So I can't even see this by clicking on the surface out in, in 360. Like I still have to, I need to be in Pro Tools in order for that to do what it needs to, I can't see the plugin. So even this whole situation is clunky. Um, yeah, so can't see what plugins you're using on your tracks. If I hover over it, do I see anything? Nope, I just see 360. It does not tell me the name of the plugin. So if that's important to you, that's a knock right, right there. I mean, again, I can go into plug-in mode, and then if I wanted to, so then I can open it that way. And then if I want to close it, I can't close it from the surface. I don't know if there's a button I can do. Uh, let me see, let me go into the 360 software. Let's look at the 360. Let's see our keys that are available. And let's just see if there's a, Close window. Uh, nope. Not seeing anything about closing a window. And so here's another thing going back kind of to SoundFlow. You actually can program mouse movements in, in SoundFlow. You can actually tell it to, there's a function where it says find mouse position. And then you can tell it to move mouse position to a certain place on the screen, which the way you figure out what that is, is you use the, um, the screen capture where you do the shift command four, uh, let me see, and you will put that up. So if you do the shift command four, you know how you get the little crossbars there. So like, say I wanted to click on this, I would tell it to get the position and then I would tell it to find on the screen that position right there. And the way I usually do is I'll hover over it. If I can see the numbers, I'll copy the numbers right there. But if not, 
I'll go over to SoundFlow because it has a white background and then I can see the numbers and then I'll type those numbers in and that will allow me to tell it to click the mouse in a certain position on the screen. So very, again, SoundFlow is dope. We're not talking about SoundFlow today, but somebody asked about it. So I figured I, I'd mention that. So you can even do mouse movements with SoundFlow. So yeah, this, this 363 thing, man, the SSL is cool, but it just, it's not it for, for Pro Tools. It, it's just, it's not there. It's not ready for prime time. Um, it's too limited, man. I get the premise of it. And I, again, I think if you are a heavy SSL plugin user, like you, you don't mind throwing SSL plugins across all your tracks and that's what you're gonna use the bulk of and do the bulk of your mixing there. And then anything else you need to control, you'll do it with your mouse. Or if you're fine with the limited control you get on the UF8, you can go there. I know the UC1 has some um, control as well with plugins and this whole programming thing. You can actually extend the assignment to the UC1. But again, you're still only talking about what, four additional knobs on the UC1. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I that's the conclusion, man. Pro Tools users use Yukon unless you want to rock with SSL plugins and you're okay with using 360 link to assign other plugins and not seeing the name of your plugin on the track and just seeing 360. It's been your man, Dale Mix It. I appreciate everybody for being here. This has been a long one. I've been on since four o'clock, so almost four hours of live streaming, but we went in, we went in full in depth. I covered the S1, I covered the doc, I covered the Avid Control app. I brought the artist mix in a little bit. I covered the UC1, I covered the UF8, I covered SSL 360 and play this back, man, y'all. Rewind this, play it back. I'm gonna leave it up definitely for the next um, 12 hours at least, uh, maybe 24. And it might come down so I can chop it up and make it more of a concise video presentation, but everything's here, man. And if I, if I do leave it up, what I probably do is put chapters in it, you know, on YouTube, how you can put chapters and you can click in a different spot. So everybody's on YouTube, that'll be great for y'all on Facebook. You don't have that ability yet. So I would recommend go to YouTube so you can click around a little bit better, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm a hop off here. I am hungry and yeah, I will catch y'all in the next one. Peace.